Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex P. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by Boston Hemp, Inc., Saturday, April 20th. Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, Matt Robinson, a special Saturday appearance uh, on the show here after he was not able to join us Thursday. He's on today. It's actually better he's on today because the playoffs start today. So Matt's back with us. And Zach Urban, for a few weeks we've missed him, our Saturday guy, but he is back in the rotation and ready to go for the Stanley Cup playoffs. So Zach, we'll start with you because it's been a while. How have things been and are you ready for these playoffs? Yeah, no, things have been good. Uh, definitely excited that everything's set and uh, some crazy first round matchups uh, to start here for sure to make it pretty entertaining and get a good set for how the playoffs are going to be going forward. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, Alex, um, it was a great <clears throat> playoff preview show, by the way, I want to mention yesterday with uh, Danny DeKaiser and Luke Adam. We thank them uh, for joining us. Uh, we got into a, <laughs> we broke down a lot. Make sure you check that out. If you have not <laughs> yeah. seen it right after this show ends, Go back and watch and or listen to yesterday's playoff preview show. We gave you almost two hours, and we talked series player props, uh, just all kinds of stuff and good betting opportunities for us from a series perspective with every each of the eight series. So make sure you go back and uh, tune into that if you didn't get a chance to yesterday. But a fun show yesterday, Alex, and today is the day. We've got yeah. Stanley Cup playoff hockey in action today, two games, four more tomorrow. Uh, the best time of the year, the first round especially, because you get games morning, noon, and night. These quadruple headers like we're going to see tomorrow, uh, you just can't beat it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is the best time of the year by far. And it's so nice. Like I said, we talk about it you know, year after year now with the expansion of betting and a lot of these, uh, you know, the the now the standard American books, your MGM, your DraftKings, your FanDuel, having all these other options uh, to bet with these different series prices being able to bet on series prices adjusted during the series as well, game by game, really makes it even more exciting now than, than it was, say, 10 years ago. We just, you know, had to pick your spots here or there, get a few options to bet on before the series, and then try to make a few adjustments, uh, you know, game by game. So having, you know, such a wide open array of bets to choose from on top of these great matchups, like I said, you know, we're seeing uh, matchups that we haven't seen in, in a long time. We're seeing matchups that we've seen for the third time or the second time in recent years. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Can't wait for it. No doubt. And, um, of course, Matt Robinson, fan of the Dallas Stars. You'd think he would wait until game one of the series before he gets all uh, filled with angst and anxiety and stress. He was stressing a couple nights ago, seeing the ending of those Vegas, Anaheim, Chicago, L.A. games, trying to figure out who the fuck his team was going to play. Uh, in the uh, first round, because it was just nuts back and forth, back and forth. But it ended up being the Vegas Golden Knights. It's a series I want to see. I think it's the series a lot of people uh, want to see. Matt, I know you're excited for that, but you're a hockey fan too. You're excited for the entirety of the Stanley Cup playoffs starting today. Yeah, no doubt. And I, at the end of the day, I didn't really care who they ended up playing. It was just how those last two games played out. And I know we were talking throughout, but you know, Vegas kind of rolls over early in the third. It's like, okay, I guess we got Vegas. Like, that's what's going to happen. And then Chicago comes storming out and up 4-3 on L.A. Like, it was fucking chaos. And it was all in, like, a 45-minute span. Um, but, yeah, no doubt, super excited for the playoffs. Um, obviously excited Dallas is in it. Um, there's definitely been years of my lifetime that they're not. So, you know, always better when your favorite team's in the mix. Um, but, as Zach mentioned, there's some great series all around the league. Um, and we kind of talked about it pre-playoffs, but I think this is definitely a year where, you know, if you were to pick your five or six favorites to win the cup, three of them are going to be gone in the first round, two of them at least. Um, so it's definitely going to be an exciting playoffs and uh, excited for it to start on a Saturday. It's a perfect day. It's going to be 75 and sunny here. I'm going to find a patio with a uh, with a TV on and, and watch the game and have a few beers. So I'm, I'm very excited for the playoffs to get going. Uh, Alex, I'll ask you because we've been at this for a while. Do you remember the playoffs starting on a Saturday? I mean, I, I don't, I don't remember it in the, off the top of my I head. The last time like, the playoffs start on a Saturday. I feel like it might've been before we did this show. 
I yeah. think like the 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 2013 when that was you know coming out of that that lockout, I think that started on a Saturday. But yeah, it, right. it's it's not not often. It's more common for the series to start or for the for all the series to start on like a Wednesday or Thursday, because usually the season ends on a on a Friday or Saturday. Yes. So. No, I agree. I mean, this is this is definitely unique territory, rarefied air, if you will, that we've got. Uh, obviously, the playoffs starting on Saturday, which I think is great because then you can set it up. You know, nicely. I'm surprised they didn't go with more of a triple header, quadruple header thing today, but it is what it is. It's still a double header. And then tomorrow we've got a quadruple header. And we may not have even had a quadruple header unless certain teams, including I heard Nashville, were vehement that we don't want to wait around for Monday or Tuesday to start our series. Well, let's get going on Sunday, especially since the building in Vancouver is available you know, on Sunday night. So the, uh, the NHL uh, obviously granted that request. And, uh, and uh, as a result, now we got hockey on Sunday night and they decided to get Colorado Winnipeg going Sunday night as well. So quadruple letter tomorrow. And the way we're going to do it on today's show is we're going to cover everything for the entire weekend uh, on today's show. We'll talk the two games for Saturday and all four games on Sunday, and we will not be on with you tomorrow. So it'll be a day off tomorrow, no show, but we will be back on Monday uh, after today's show with uh, our, uh, basically a doubleheader for us. Daily show at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then our first playoff live betcast Monday night. All right, so make sure you're aware of that. There it is, Monday night, and it's free for all. So all you got to do is uh, tune in, watch, or join us. You send an email or DM to me or Alex, and we'll send you the StreamYard link for the betcast on Monday night before it begins, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We've got, of course, uh, Bruins Leafs. Hurricanes Islanders, Stars Golden Knights, and the Kings Oilers, the four games on Monday night for the uh, first playoff live betcast. And I was saying to Matt, you know what, so I don't spoil anything with Dal- I, for This is for every game. You know what I'm going to do? And I know I'm ahead on the feed and on these betcasts of a few people. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be quiet. If something happens, I'm going to just wait till someone else reacts, and then I'll react with them. Like, it's like I'll see the goal. I'll be like this, you know, just stone face, no reaction, no emotion. And then I hear someone else on the stream going score. And I'm like, yeah, there we go. <laughs> then I'll react. You will wait for someone else to make that first move. Not me. It ain't going to be me. I ain't spoiling shit for anybody here on this uh, betcast Monday night. Uh, so there's, that's because I, I, I get it. I, I My there, feed for the most part is ahead of everybody's. And I don't know why, because I would think, you know, the people in the states where the event's happening, they'd get the to see the goal ahead of me. Yet it doesn't always work that. It doesn't often work that way. There's there's literally been times I think that I've been watching the game, and Alex or uh, Ian will go, "Oh, Stars just gave one up," and I'm still at a commercial break. I'm like, "What? The, <laughs> the puck's not even in play," <laughs> and it's like 25 real seconds go by, and then it's like, "Oh yeah, goal off the face off." So. Appreciate that, Ian. <laughs> Especially for for the Stars game, I'll be uh, I'll be muting the sound if if I start hearing uh, oh Stars gave one up. Vegas scores early. I'm like, now that's a concerted effort and my, on my part to just make sure, like, just just stay stone face and just rigid whenever something happens, so no one you don't give anything away. I, I'm uh, just happy that everything's gonna be on cable now. I don't have to deal with the NHL Center Ice package being off by about almost 45. You know, seconds to a yeah. minute. So uh, that that that's one of the the enjoyable things about the playoffs. No, that's stone face, not stoned face. Okay, there's a big big difference. I'm right? stoned faced. There we go. <laughs> I think a lot of people are stoned faced today. Uh, yes. With this being uh, 420, uh, no doubt. All right, let's get into it. We've got Game One: Carolina Hurricanes hosting the New York Islanders, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. A return home, well, not a homecoming, I guess you could say, for John Forsland, who will be on the call for TBS for this first game, along with Panger and Jen Botterill. Uh, Islanders and Hurricanes, we've got Carolina minus 245 home favorites, five and a half being the uh, total uh, here in this uh, Eastern Conference first round matchup. You know, this is a very interesting game and series to break down. You've got this surging New York Islanders team that comes into this series playing good hockey. Patrick Waugh was brought into save the season, get this team into the playoffs, and, you know, mission accomplished. And a great job by the uh, Islanders getting to this point. But this will be a big, tall order against a Carolina team that we know they have had playoff shortcomings and, uh, you know, just not getting to their ultimate goal in the past. Uh, and we know that a lot of the times the issue has been maybe not quite enough offense 
you know, the defense for all these years has been great. They've had one of the best collective blue liners and blue lines in the NHL led by Jacob Slavin. You know, that blue line's excellent. You know, just so much depth, so much quality to it. But they haven't always gotten those timely critical goals when they've needed them. And that's kind of what's held them back, you know, in some of these uh, playoff years uh, in the past. But, you know, Slavin, Burns, Shea, Pesci, Orlov, and Chatfield, that is one heck of a six on the blue line. They have Frederick Anderson and Pyotr Kochekov, their top two goalies. Frederick Anderson will get the first, will be the number one guy. And look, he's earned it. For all the question marks I had about Freddie Anderson coming back from the injury, and I do still have worry about some of the playoff struggles he's had in the past, but down the stretch, he was good. He was really good after coming back from injury. So got to give the veteran the, the nod here in net if you're Rod Brindamore. You can always go to Kochekov if he struggles you know, at any point. Uh, during this series. And then I think the difference in Carolina this year is they went out and they got someone that could be that difference maker offensively, that game breaker, acquiring Jake Gensel. You see what that addition does to the forward group. Now you've got a very dynamic top line with him, Sebastian Ajo and Seth Jarvis. You're able to slide Tara Vinen down to a second line with Marty Natchez uh, and Jesperi Kotkaniemi. You suddenly have Jordan Martinuk, Jordan Stahl, and Andre Svechnikov. And Svechnikov down on the third line is very interesting, you know, but uh, they're trying to use him more in a two way role, checking role, but still have the offense and also give the third line a little bit more pop uh, offensively as well. And don't forget about Jordan Martinuk, who has been someone that's been a very sneaky goal scorer, you know, at times uh, in the past. And then you have a pretty solid, hardworking fourth line, uh, including. Uh, the Texas native, uh, Stefan Nason, uh, on that uh, fourth line for the Canes. So they just suddenly have a much deeper forward group. The New York Islanders, look, uh, certainly they can, if they get great goaltending, the kind of goaltending that Semyon Varlamov delivered for them uh, down the stretch of the regular season, they're going to be in this series and they're going to be competitive. If they get the offense that they got from especially the, the group of Bo Horvat, Brock Nelson and Kyle Palmieri down the stretch who really carry them, you know, they're going to be in and competitive in this game, in this series. But to me, I think the difference is going to be the better blue line for the Carolina Hurricanes, because that's been the issue for the Islanders this year, the defensive decline in this team. And even when they got Pulock and Pellick back from injury on the blue line, we still saw them struggle at times and be inconsistent. Their goal and nailed them out you know, in a lot of games, even though they were still, you know, coughing up the puck still, you know, their penalty kill was below average and their penalty kill season long was brutal. You know, one of the worst penalty killing teams in the NHL, the Islanders, which is a departure from what we've seen from them in the past. And then you flip it around to Carolina. The addition of Gensel makes them stronger in the five on five offensive department, but it definitely makes them better with the power play. There is no question about that. And we have seen Jake Gensel be a strong playoff performer in years past. There were a couple of those seasons when they won cups in Pittsburgh where you can make a case Jake Gensel was their best forward in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So he's that kind of guy. He elevates his play usually at this time of year. And I think his addition and just a little deeper forward group, because I don't know, what what am I going to get from McLean and Engvall and a struggling Anders Lee, the captain, and am I going to get anything from Matt Martin, Cal Clutterbuck, and Holmstrom, you know, in the fourth line offensively for the Islanders? I'm not so sure. I think it's a deeper forward group for the Hurricanes. It's a one through six on the blue line for Carolina that is as good as any. The, the, uh, the only question would be in goal, because Varlamov's been on fire and he's been great. And can Anderson shrug off the playoff struggles past and play like he did down the stretch in the regular season? If he does, this is Carolina's series to lose, in my opinion. As far as game one goes here, I think there's it's going to be some there's going to be some chances to take overs in this series. I'm just not sure it's game one. Because if you look back last year, it was a very tight 2-1 game one. And then all of a sudden, bang, it opened up. Game two went over the total. Game three went over the total. Game four went over the total. That's kind of my approach here. I lean over, but I'm going to maybe wait and sit this one out and look for game two to go over the total, thinking maybe we get a 2-1, 3-1 game here today uh, in game one. I, I definitely think there's going to be some overs in this series, though, uh, as we go forward. Why? Because Carolina's a better offensive team this year. I'm convinced of it. With Jake Gensel, they're a better offensive team this year than they were last year or two years ago in the playoffs. And I'm pretty sure the Islanders aren't as good defensively 
and we know their penalty kill has been bad. So I think that could show up at some point. And then you look at the Islanders here where we have seen them at times, you know, score goals and be able to explode at times offensively. But the only concern I would have about that happening here is that they so much of their reliance offensively is on just a, a small handful of players, Palmieri, Horvat, Nelson, maybe a little bit Barzell. And if those guys get shut down, where do you turn to? Who's going to step up and get that big goal for you for the Islanders? So I don't have a lot pre-game. Side and total, I don't have much here pre-game. Um, I lean to the draw because it could be tight, could be low scoring, could be a one-goal game. So might sprinkle on the draw for just a couple pennies. Uh, but other than that, you know, there's um, gonna. this is definitely one of those series where I want to see game one. I think there's going to be better opportunity to make wagers in this series in game two and beyond. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Islanders, Hurricanes. Yeah, this series for me is all about kind of set using plays to set up other plays. Uh, you know, I talked about it. If you didn't watch the uh, the playoff preview yesterday, but I, I mentioned the way that I'm attacking this is I'm going to be betting. I also have a 2-1 series lead after three games, plus 250, hoping that that will open up a portal to where I can bet Carolina to win this series. I also have an exact series outcome, which based on that map, I have Carolina winning game one and then losing games two and three. Uh, that being said, I'm setting things up for within the game as well. I think we get some pace and goals early because of the fact that these two teams played each other last year in the playoffs. We saw how tight things were. Like I said, Carolina's a little bit better offensively. The Islanders aren't as sharp defensively. And we're getting plus a dollar ten with over one and a half. I think the Canes want to set the tone being at home. Uh, I think the Owls will have some pushback there as well. So I think we get more pace in the first period than we do this entire contest. So I'm on the first period over, but I'm not on full game over. And if we cash first period over, we're going under in the full game. So that's the setup for, for, for what I'm looking at there. I also did grab a little bit of the draw at plus 335. Please, please, please shop around. The, the rules apply like usual with the draw versus the yes-no overtime prop, even more so now than it did in the regular season because I'm seeing gaps that are 35, 40 cents difference. So you definitely want to look for that three-way draw, that regulation draw, before looking at the yes-no overtime prop. They are screwing you over royally at a lot of different places with that prop. So please be aware of that. So regulation draw, three-way draw, you want to look for that before the yes-no prop. All right, good stuff. And I st- I meant I am keeping my promise. I will recommend the same game parlay with every single playoff game uh, on the show throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs. But I'll wait to hear from Matt and Zach, and then I'll go back around and mention what I'm on as far as the same game parlay here uh, in this one. Uh, Matt, what do you think here, Islanders Hurricanes? Yeah, I tend to agree with Alex here. I think I, I'm on the first period over. Maybe it's just my excitement for the playoffs to start. It's the first game of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, you know, it's a plus price. Um, so I'm going to be on that first period over. But I I also agree, especially if it gets to three goals in the first, that live uh, game over is going to jump to like seven and a half. That's going to be an easy under for me because I do think things tighten up a little bit. Um, and then, you know, I, I do want to mention I'm going to be lighter on betting these first few games just to see how the playoffs are going to kind of play out because, I mean, there's years like the uh, the Flyers-Pittsburgh series where every game there's 11 goals, and it's like, what? Like, like what's going on? So I do want to get a feel for how the playoffs are going to be called from a penalty perspective and all that stuff. Um, I liked your point, Ian, about Gensel. He's always been a playoff player. He's in a new, you know, arena. Um, it is a home game, so I, I may sprinkle on his like goal and point props. Um, I think I saw his two point prop is like plus 220, um, over one and a half points, so I may jump on that. Um, and then as far as series go, because I know you mentioned before the show, as we go through each game, if I have any predictions or anything like that, um, I obviously lean Carolina here. Um, I think it's going to be in five games, maybe six, uh, if Varlamov plays really well. Uh, but I just think this is a different Carolina team than the past couple seasons. They're a little deeper offensively, um, and I think they make a little run. So I'm definitely on Carolina. I'm not on any series betting right now just because there's not a lot of value in taking Carolina uh, currently. But if if I do, if the Islanders steal one today, then I might be you know betting on Carolina because you might get some better odds. All right, good stuff there. Zach, what do you think here, Islanders-Canes? 
Yeah, I'm definitely uh, leaning a little bit towards the Canes. Uh, like Matt said, I think Caroline is built uh, a little bit different this year. You know, they got a little more depth. I'm a big Jake Gensel fan, so I like that as well. And uh, Anderson's been playing well, and he, he should be pretty fresh with coming off the injury too. So I hope that pays dividends for them down the road. But I think the Canes get off to a good start uh, today, so I'm going to take them in the first period. Uh, I'm going to also possibly jump on that uh, under as well if we get off to a hot start. I think that could be a good bet that everyone should look at live. So I think we're all kind of on that thing. But uh, uh, we'll see. I, you know, the Islanders are scary. You know, with Patty Waugh coming in, it kind of changed a little bit. And we know that they can win those close games. You know, the Islanders bringing a lot of games to overtime. So small numbers here to start as well for me until things kind of open up or if they stay tight throughout. But, yeah, definitely leaning towards the Canes here in the series, thinking around six games as well. Absolutely. All right. I'm keeping it simple with the SGP uh, for uh, uh, just a three player Carolina point parlay at plus 180. Ajo, Jarvis, and Dick and Gensel. Uh, so there you go. Ajo, Jarvis, Gensel, each of them to get a point plus 180. Pretty good price, actually. Just to ask each of them to get one point, all those top line guys. Uh, and I do think in the first game, that's when you might see this top line have a good game and then maybe. The Islanders need a game or two to make uh, some adjustments, who they're going to use against that top line uh, out on the ice. So uh, that's plus 180. I also did a smaller one that has those three players and uh, threw in Natchez and Tara Vinen as well to get a point. That one is plus 525. So just a little more bang for the buck. But the primary one, uh, the primary SGP, the one that I've got the most money on here is that plus 180 for Ajo, Jarvis, and Gensel uh, to get a point here for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes in this game. And then individual props, um, a little Seth Jarvis goal prop. Definitely uh, the way he played down the stretch we've talked about. He's also been a good playoff performer uh, in the past for the Carolina Hurricanes. At this time of year, you know, this is when we've seen Seth Jarvis rise to the occasion. And I hinted at it yesterday saying I thought he was uh, his over goals for the series was worth a look. Uh, and uh, also looking at me. I think Ian's computer froze again. So yeah, that that's still definitely the uh, things we're looking at. There is definitely, uh, like I said, Jarvis goal, and like I said, those Jarvis series props were worth a look, uh, definitely. And then Paul Paul Mary for the Islanders. You know, he is the one. I'm he has been terrific down the stretch. It, it's hard to say. You know, I have confidence in uh, anybody outside of. Palmieri, Nelson, and Horvat, and he, and Barzell to really be able to find the back of the net consistently for the Islanders. But my favorite look for the Islanders is definitely Kyle Palmieri. If I'm going to look at anyone in their direction for a goal prop in game one here, that would be Kyle Palmieri. All right, next up, it's the second game on this Saturday. Uh, we've got the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Boston Bruins. Boston minus 125, home favorites here in game one. Uh, and the total sitting at uh, five and a half or six. Make sure you shop around here because we're seeing five and a halfs at some books and six at others. So uh, shop around as far as the total is concerned here with the Leafs and the Bruins. This is a obviously a big rivalry, original six. Uh, there's history with these two teams. There's no question about that. You have to ask yourself, though, who's got the advantage possibly going into a game one? Now, the big news here is Suddenly, William Nylander showed up on the injury report and missed practice yesterday for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he is a true game-time decision for tonight for Game 1. Uh, Sheldon Keefe not tipping his hand, saying whether uh, William Nylander would play uh, here tonight for the Leafs uh, in Game 1, uh, but definitely we will uh, have to monitor that closer to a puck drop, but definitely uh, the Leafs hoping that they will have him available. Regardless, the key for the Leafs down the stretch, I think, is some creative lineup uh, changes, I guess you could say, from Sheldon Keith. And what he was able to do was he put Max Domi, uh, obviously with Austin Matthews down the stretch, and you certainly saw the chemistry that developed uh, with those two players on the top line together. They were awesome. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, he was a perfect playmaking option for number 34 down the stretch, uh, which was great to see for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. And uh, like I say, that really fueled you know, the uh, finish to the season uh, that Austin Matthews had. So going into this series, 
you know, you're still going to see that line intact. Austin Matthews with the two guys that were specifically brought in to the Toronto Maple Leafs to be the difference makers offensively at this time of year. Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi with Austin Matthews on that top line. I'm glad he's sticking with it because, you know, in the past we've seen him play with Marner and we've seen him play with Nylander uh, on the top line, but there's clear chemistry that's developed late in the regular season. Matthews with Domi and Bertuzzi. Keefe is sticking with that and rolling with it here in game one. Matthew Nyes, John Tavares, and Mitch Marner as of right now, the second line. Uh, Nick Robertson, Pontus Holmberg, third line. And again, Dewar, Camp, Reeves, the fourth line. Noah Gregor is probably, or uh, Callie Yarncroke, but I don't know if Callie Yarncroke's ready to come back yet. Uh, it, uh, I think he's still going to miss this game, but I think Gregor would be the one that would come in if Nylander doesn't go. Uh, and then, of course, the blue line, they've decided, and this was a tough decision to do this for uh, Sheldon Keefe, but TJ Brody is the odd man out on the Toronto Maple Leafs blue line. And I can't say it's a bad decision. TJ Brody's not had a great year. We've talked about the mental struggles. We've talked about how much he's had going on off the ice that he's had to deal with and how maybe it's impacted his defensive play on the ice. We know he struggled in the Florida series last year as well. Uh, TJ Brody he had a dreadful series, turnovers, getting knocked off the puck, not physical enough, not taking out the man in front of the net. Just had a terrible playoffs last year. So I think it's, and he didn't have a great season this year. He played a little bit better down the stretch, but I think they had made up their mind, the coaching staff, that look, I think right now our best six on the blue line does not include TJ Brody. So it's Morgan Riley, Ilya Labushkin, Simone Benoit, Jake McCabe, Joel Edmondson, Timothy Lilligren. Uh, going to be the defenseman for Toronto. Ilya Samsonov, of course, starting goaltender. Uh, for the Boston Bruins, there was concern about Brandon Carlo's status uh, for game one, but it looks like he is going to be uh, good to go. It sure looks that way uh, for the uh, Bruins, uh, and they should have pretty much everyone uh, available to them. Shattenkirk, Pete, Grizzly, Carlo, Lindholm, McAvoy uh, on the uh, blue line. You know, the thing we talked about with Boston is, you know, the fact that in the second half of the year, they actually had that little stretch after Jim Montgomery put them through the bag skate where they played very, very well, uh, no question. But then they kind of tailed off after that. Before that moment, they struggled a little bit, the Bruins. You know, their play was very much uneven down the stretch, so uneven that basically they invited Florida to take the division from them uh, when it was all said and done uh, down the stretch. So, when I look at this game and I look at a Toronto team that has to set the tone here, it's a Bruins team that's owned you in the past, although those series, I do want to mention, it, own them in terms of the the, the result, the win-loss result. Let's not act like it was a sweep, those three series. You know, seven-game series, all three previous Leaf Bruins series in the last decade. So Toronto was right there. They just couldn't get the big goal or the big save or a bounce of the puck at the right time and they ended up falling short all three times. But it's not like they were just absolutely run out of the rink by the Bruins uh, in those three series. And I know that they've lost seven straight to Boston. They lost every regular season game this year to Boston. But I think there is an onus on Toronto, especially knowing that they played a little bit better on the road. That's usually been the way it's been for Toronto. Let's not forget what they did to Tampa in the first round on the road last year. They played better in Tampa last year in that first round series win against the lightning than they did at home. I think this is a team that is comfortable playing away from home. They look almost more relaxed playing away from home. And then Sheldon Keefe drops the bomb after the Tampa Bay game. You remember that game, which didn't mean anything other than trying to get Austin Matthews to 70 goals. And they played like it, it was a bad game for the Leafs. But you know what Sheldon Keefe said after the game, it's the first time in my coaching career that during a game, I was actually looking at video of another opponent talking about the Boston Bruins. So the coaching staff of the Leafs in the intermissions in Tampa Bay the other night, they're actually breaking down film on Boston. So uh, to me, that's a clear warning sign that, look, the coaching staff didn't give two shits about the Tampa game. You could maybe even argue the Florida game as well. And probably the players, it probably trickled down to them that, you know, the coaching staff's not paying any attention to Tampa Bay here in a meaningless game. Why should we? The focus was on Boston. In the dressing room, the chatter in the intermission was about Boston. And that tells me that the Leafs, from a mental standpoint at least, are dialed in, I think, going into game one tonight to maybe get off to a good start. So I like Toronto here. I'm going to take them in game one here, plus 110 uh, tonight in this spot. 
Um, I think this is a very important uh, spot for them tonight to get to, to set the tone, to get off to a good start. And the one thing they've noted, too, about last year, even when beating Tampa Bay, not getting off to a good start in game one, fixing that this year. Domi's talked about it. Matthews has talked about it, that we need to start playing better in game ones because we dropped game one to Tampa last year. Now, they did win that series, but they lost game one. And we know they lost game one, obviously, against Florida as well in the second round. So I think this is definitely a Leaf team that is focused and a, a Bruins team that has enough vulnerability that I think in game one, the Leafs might be able to uh, get the job done. So for me, I like Toronto here, plus 110. This is one where I like the first period over a little bit. Uh, here as well more than the full game over i was tempted at five and a half but the the first period over i think can get there uh we get the kind of start where both teams are aggressive early we do have you know samsonov who's been great for most of the second half still some questions and i think even with boston their goaltending leveled off to a certain degree late in the season as well so a little first period over but primarily here like in toronto plus 110 uh, alex what do you think here leafs bruins game one yeah, I like Toronto uh, in game one of this series as well. Like I said, that quote from Keith uh, told me a lot. They're ready for this playoff series where the quotes we're hearing from Jim Montgomery the last, uh, you know, few post-game press conferences weren't, weren't as stable. You know, Jimmy Murphy was kind of talking with us about that as well. That Maybe there's a little bit of, of hesitation going on. Like, you know, obviously we know the mental hurdles that Toronto has to get through every postseason. But think about Boston. Yeah. This team's not as sharp as they were a year ago at this time. A year ago at this time, we thought they were locked and loaded, ready to go on and win the Stanley Cup after having the greatest season ever, have a 3-1 lead and completely blow it. So they might be a little shaky if they lose the first game where everybody's thinking, oh, if Toronto loses the first game, here we go again. Maybe Boston might have that a little bit more in their psyche, and I think that's where Toronto can you know, quiet the crowd. And that's the biggest thing we talk about with teams on the road. If you're a good team on the road, you got to establish pace early, take the crowd out of it just as well as taking your opponents out of it. And so, like I said, I would be looking for first period over, but because this is $1.18, $1.20, I'm going to wait and try and grab that live. But I definitely like Toronto on the side here. And I have, like I said, I don't have a side winner necessarily as far as series goes. I like the series to go six or seven games. I have both sides to win in six, both sides to win in seven. So what I will be adding to the portfolio for the series will be Leafs to win game one, Leafs to win series. See that right now. I bet him GM plus 200. And I also have Leafs to win game one, Bruins to win the series plus 425. So once again, just kind of adding on to the stack of, of making some profit, whoever wins the series. Exactly right. Like I like Toronto in game one. I am still very much wishy-washy on them for the series. That I do want to point that out. I picked them in the bracket, Toronto, but uh, I have not bet Toronto yet. To win the series i'm only on them here in game one tonight because i do think it lines up that um i do think they bring a, a heck of an effort tonight uh it's got the everything it's it sounds like they've been invested in preparing for the boston bruins for <laughs> uh several days as soon as they knew and you know they're talking about preparing for boston when they're still playing their final regular season game so i actually think that's a good thing uh, here for the leafs so what do you think here matt leafs bruins yeah, so I'm I'm big on the Leafs in this series, to be honest with you. Um, I think I think the matchup karma. Uh, I mentioned it. You know, Boston kind of fizzles out. Doesn't look like they're even trying. I think that's going to come back to haunt them. Um, and I do think this is a little different Toronto team than maybe the past couple of years. You had guys like Domi and Bertuzzi. Those are great playoff guys. Um, you know, when Dallas had Max Domi last year. I would have loved to see him get re-signed. Like, he's a guy that you want on your team in the playoffs. So, um, and I think it starts tonight. Um, I am on that over by Fecta. Again, nothing huge betting-wise, but I am on over one and a half and over five and a half, um, respectively. Um, and then I am on Toronto uh, to win the game. Um, I'm thinking about taking a Toronto first period money line. Again, if it's a tie, you get your money back. So not a puck line, just a money line, because it's right around even money. Um, but I think they need a hot start if they're going to win. And then a prop that I love in this game, um, just because of how it didn't happen for him to get 70, I think it's just one of those things. I think Matthew scores the first goal tonight, so um, I'm going to be on that a little bit. I think it's just one of those things where he tried so hard to get 70, didn't get it, and he's going to score like two minutes into the game tonight and, uh, and get that first one. So I'll be on that prop as well. 
All right, yeah, Zach. I love Toronto here. Oh, sorry. And oh, uh, as far as series goes, um, I don't have any series bets, but I think I will put one in pregame on Toronto. Um, I think Toronto wins it in six. All right, Leafs and six for uh, Matt with the, this one. Uh, yeah, this is a good series. Uh, Kenny Albert, Eddie Olchick, and Brian Boucher for TNT tonight. Uh, not T, uh, sorry, TBS. I've got to keep reminding myself, TBS. It's still Turner, but it's TBS for uh, the two games to, uh, today because the basketball is on uh, TV. <clears throat> uh, what do you think here in this one, uh, Zach, Toronto, Boston? Yeah, um, I think you guys are sleeping on the Bruins a little bit. Uh, I think they're a little bit choked, obviously, with how things ended up last year. They also haven't been out of the first round since 2021, so that's pretty big for their organization, I think, as a whole. So, you know, they've got some guys that have been there for a while. No Bergeron this year, but uh, Zaka and Coyle have really picked it up through the center ice for them, and I think they're going to get off to a good start in this series and take game one. So I'm, I'm leaning towards Boston here in game one. Uh, for sure. Uh, I've never been a Leafs fan, so that might have a little bit to do with my pick here. But I, I just I don't really see Toronto beating Boston four out of seven games here. So uh, I do agree with you. Like you said, like, uh, you know, Toronto has been really preparing for this series as soon as they knew. But who says Boston hasn't? Right. So we don't know what's going on maybe as much over there. But the only thing that kind of scares me a little bit in Boston is I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but they're goaltending just because they do have two studs essentially. And, you know, you don't want to have that controversy of like who to play or if someone has a bad game or, you know, if the Leafs do get up early in the series or something like that and you're playing a guessing game. So they seem to act like they know exactly what their plan is with their goalies, even though they haven't even confirmed who's playing for sure yet today. So I don't know if they're trying to play a little bit of mind games on the other side or not, but. Definitely leaning towards Boston in this series. I've got them in six in my bracket, so screw the Leafs. I love it. That's all right. It's all good. All my buddies are from out east that I played hockey with and went to school and pro, so almost I'm from Ontario, so they're huge Leafs fans, and I've been hearing it for years, so oh, it's, right. it's been fun for me, so hopefully that trend continues. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. No, they've had a lot of misery. And look, if – there is nothing history-wise that would say that would tell you, yeah, bet Toronto in this series. No. And like the thing yeah. too is yeah. like I don't really have much confidence in their goaltending in Toronto, and I, I find that you know you need that big save for you know in the playoffs, and you know maybe you need a game where he saves forty. And I, I don't know if maybe Samsonov has that. I don't, I don't think he has it for the duration of playoffs, but yeah. he'll definitely yeah. give me a little bit more confidence if they can bounce uh, past the Bruins. You know that could be a little bit of their Achilles heel in a way where. They can fly through after that, but who knows? I get Ian. You can vouch for this. I said it going far back as maybe right after the All Star break that I wanted to fade both of these teams in the first round. Yeah, the, the, I, I don't trust. We're splitting really hairs in this. That's what I mean. We're getting yeah. a great matchup right away. It's crazy, but yeah, it is. A, but it leads to it. It's a tough series to predict, but it's a great matchup to watch. It's a great yeah, series so, to watch yeah. because there's vulnerability with both teams big time going into this. There's vulnerability every year with Toronto going into the playoffs, but I think there's vulnerability with Boston this year more than in a very long time. You know, let's not act like there's not skeletons in their fucking closet, you know, after completely blowing it last year uh, against the uh, Florida Panthers in the uh, first round. What I like, too, is that the Leafs in years past look like they've been scared, scared on the ice, scared to make a play, scared to take a hit. Scared to do the little things to win in the playoffs. I think they're going to have more backbone collectively as a team because you got a McCabe, you've got a Labushkin back in the fold, you got Edmondson now who's going to crack skulls. Ryan Reeves now is going to be on the ice and ready to make sure no one starts shit with Austin Matthews or anybody. I think that does help them. It gives them a little more collective. Hey, we, maybe we can throw our weight around now, and we're not going to be so scared and timid out there, which you know has been their issue at times. Uh, obviously in the past. But that's a great game and great series. I'm looking forward to Leafs and Bruins Saturday night tonight. That one starts. All right, we've got four games on Sunday. Oh, by the way, the the um, same game parlay for this is just uh, a two-player goal parlay for me here. Zaka for Boston, Bertuzzi for Toronto. Zaka's been great down the stretch. Bertuzzi, I think, is going to have a huge impact. I mentioned that my favorite series-long goal prop of the first round was Bertuzzi over one and a half goals. At what even money plus a hundred? I couldn't believe the price for that. I think he absolutely gets two goals minimum. I think he could even get three or four. He's playing with Matthews. 
Uh, he goes to the tough areas of the ice to score goals. So Bertuzzi over one and a half goals in the series. I love that bet. And uh, I like him to score tonight uh, as well. I like Matthew Nyes and Nick Robertson as well. A little sprinkle on both of them uh, for the Leafs. Uh, now this will be a second year in the playoffs for Nyes. Nick Robertson's getting an opportunity. He's been a nice uh, offensive boon for them down the stretch. And then for the Bruins, Zaka stands out for sure uh, as far as goal scoring. Jake DeBrusque, I think, is someone, too, in the playoffs. He's capable of elevating uh, as well. So, uh, But definitely Zaka is my favorite uh, Bruin uh, prop, point prop, goal prop, you name it. Uh, he's been very good down the stretch. I think it wouldn't surprise me to see him make an impact tonight. All right, Sunday, we've got the bat. How about this to start the Sunday slate? The Battle of Florida, Game 1, Tampa Bay Lightning, Florida Panthers, Florida minus 170, uh, home favorites, uh, five and a half being the uh, total uh, here in this game. Uh, you look at this matchup, it should be phenomenal. Dislike, animosity, regional rivalry, a little bit of history too because the Tampa Bay Lightning swept the Florida Panthers four straight two years ago uh, in the playoffs. But really, ever since that sweep by Tampa over Florida, which led to the uh, ouster of Andrew Burnett at the time and led to Paul Maurice coming in as the head coach, really ever since that time, Florida's owned this series. You know, in the regular season, they've they've been better than Tampa last year, this year as well. Uh, and they look ready or certainly primed to, take the mantle of we're the best team in this state right now. Uh, and we will see if they can follow through on it here. That being said, you still have a, uh, uh, the hearts of champions for Tampa. John Cooper, a phenomenal coach, a, the, one of the best goalies in the NHL in uh, Andre Vasilevsky. And of course, you got a core in Steven Stamkos, Braden Point, and Nikita Kucherov, the historic season he had, uh, and Victor Hedman that aren't going to go down without a fight. I totally respect that side of it. Not going to be easy for Florida, but then you peel back the layers and you start to look at this matchup in more in depth. Tampa Bay is a really reliant team on the power play, and that's going to be something that is going to be critical. It's going to be critical for Florida, who's actually a solid penalty kill team, but it's going to be important still to stay out of the box and maintain discipline. Will they be able to do that is the question because so much of their game is hacking and whacking after the whistle, getting in scrums, pushing and shoving after the whistle. And sometimes that aggressiveness physically, especially getting involved in all that stuff after the whistle, gets them at the extra penalty. And if they take those extra penalties here against Tampa Bay, that power play is so good it could make them pay. So that's the big concern you have for if you're Paul Maurice and the Panthers. But if this series stays at five on five, even strength, Florida is the much better five on five even strength team. Tampa Bay was not a great five on five team uh, this season. Uh, and I think for Florida, that's going to be the key. Outplay them at five on five. Make sure your penalty kill is strong and don't take as many penalties. And that's going to be your key to success. Again, we've seen Vasilevsky's numbers for the season flirting around a near three goals against and a 900 save percentage, which are not typical great numbers from Andre Vasilevsky. We obviously saw what Sergey goalie Bob did last year, Bobrovsky in the playoffs playing so well for the uh, Panthers. I do think the Panthers win the series. Game one, I'm not betting aside, though, uh, as far as this is concerned. I know you've been waiting for it. You said, Ian, you're Mr. Over. You haven't gotten involved in anything yet as far as overs go. That's changing right here. Uh, this is my first over by FECTA uh, of the uh, game ones. Uh, I like first period over. We're not jumping off the ship with Tampa Bay, even though the playoffs have started. What's the run now? 22 and 5, 22 and 6, something like that now with Tampa Bay first period overs. And certainly at five and a half, and shop around because there are multiple books that have this total at five and a half. Some have six, but a lot of them still have five and a half out there. At five and a half, there is no question I'm on over the total. If you actually look at the regular season, the last two meetings have gone over the total. We saw that 9 2 beatdown by Florida in one of the games. We saw what, 6 3. Uh, in the other game as well, lots of goals. So I think this game, you know, especially with the animosity, you're going to see chippy play. You're going to see more penalties, more power plays. I think there will be goals in this series, starting with game one on Sunday afternoon. Alex, what do you think here? Lightning, Panthers. So, yeah, just to kind of recap th uh, things that I like in the series. I like Florida to win this series. Uh, I grabbed them uh, to win the series plus uh, four, four to two, plus 450. I also have a little bit of them to win 4 1 at plus 425. And I have the series going six games at, at plus 200. Now, I do have exact series outcomes. Both of them line up with Florida winning game one. 
and I have a zigzag all the way through till game five. One ticket has Florida game six at 40 to one. The other ticket has Tampa winning six and seven at 100 to one. So just wanted to kind of just give a quick recap. So no side play uh, on this game individually. I do like the first period over, of course, that's 21 and six. Now the last 27 uh, ending the regular season with Tampa Bay going over in the first period. We're getting a dollar eight fifteen to a dollar twenty, so that's definitely a worldly price uh, with that. That's probably the only thing I'm going to be be looking at as far as pregame goes. Everything else will just be kind of adjusting in game, early start time. Florida's kind of used to playing these earlier day games now over the last couple of years since they've been a good team since they made the playoffs. They shouldn't be rattled by that. Like I said, this is going to be uh, a back and forth series. I think we're going to like I said see animosity and hits early. This might be one of those series. I'm kind of trying to bring that the price now. Where we look at that uh, over power play goals, Ian kind of kind of mentioned it and alluded to that. You can get total power play goals over one and a half plus one thirty four at FanDuel. So I'll be adding that to the card as well. First period over one and a half minus one twenty, over one and a half power play goals in the game plus one thirty four. Uh, those are the only pregame looks I have for game one in the series. That's actually not a bad look at all the over one and a half power play goals because we know Tampa's going to do probably if they're going to most of their damage wouldn't shock me would be on the power play uh, in this series because of how good it is. And uh, five on five, the offense doesn't always flow so naturally for the Lightning. Meanwhile, Panthers, I think, have a underrated power play. Not a lot of people talk about Florida's power play being good, but it is capable of being very good. Uh, and I think it can be in this series as well. So that over one and a half power play goals, uh, I think that's something you'll be able to bet every game in this series, and you'll probably cash it more often than not if you ride with that prop every game, because I think the power plays both sides, especially Tampa Bay's, you know, we know how good it is uh, and uh, definitely can make an impact from a scoring perspective in this series. Uh, Matt, what do you think here? Lightning Panthers. Yeah, this is your classic series that I have no idea what the outcome is going to be, but I'm, it's one of the series I'm most excited to watch um, coming into the playoffs or, or maybe like a month, month and a half ago when Florida was really rolling. Tampa was sort of skidding. I would have thought no chance. Like Tampa's a first round exit. Florida's like my Florida and Carolina have always kind of been my Eastern Conference, you know, favorites. Um, but then when I saw this matchup land the way it did, I'm like, I don't know, maybe Tampa takes it. So I go back and forth on the series. I think it's gonna be a great series. As far as uh game one goes, I'm I'm with you, Ian. I like the over by Fecta. I think both teams are gonna score some goals. I know there's Capable goaltenders in both nets, but, you know, there's firepower on both sides. Uh, and, Alex, I appreciate you mentioning that power play goal prop because I definitely think over one and a half power play goals uh, and plus price, I think that's a great bet. So I'll be on that as well. Um, but, yeah, as far as sides go, I think I'm going to let this first game happen to kind of see how I feel the series is going to go because I, I have no idea. You know, Tampa could win in five or Florida could win in five. Like, it neither would surprise me. So, um, I think Florida is obviously the team that throughout the whole year has played at a higher level. Um, but you just can't – you can't bet against guys like Vasilevsky, Hedman. You know Kucherov's going to try and play well in the playoffs. Stamkos has looked great lately. So, um, there's still, you know, plenty capable um, – Plenty of guys that are capable of winning a series over in the Tampa locker room. And and I love John Cooper. So, um, yeah, I think this is going to be a great series. I'm really looking forward to it. And, yeah, I just saw in the chat, I forgot to mention, the two guys, Tampa, added, Duclair and uh, Dumba, have been great additions for them as well, adding a little depth down the stretch. So, um, really excited for this game. It's I think it's at like 940 my time tomorrow morning. So, it'll give me an excuse to get up early and, and go right to the couch and watch hockey. So, very excited. Yeah, you don't want to miss this one. Set that alarm clock for you, Matt, and yeah. everyone out on the West Coast there. You don't want to miss this one at uh, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. And, man, I'm so glad Bob was choosing, got this series. That's a great series, great games, and they got a great man in the mic for it now, knowing that Bob was choosing calling that. Well, at least the, first, the he'll be calling the ESPN portion of that series. Obviously, when if the, any, Turner gets any of the games uh, in that series, it won't be him, but. He'll get the ESPN games. He's also going to do the Dallas series with Vegas. Bob was choosing. So that's good. You were concerned about the, who's those ESPN announcers going to be, Matt. You got one of their best right there, and Bob was choosing. That guy is uh, – that's he's outstanding for hockey. So you, you catch a break there. That's good news there with that. 
All right, Zach, what do you think here? Tampa Bay, Florida. Yeah, like everyone said, this is, a, this is going to be a great series, a great series to watch. So I hope it's everything we expect. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm leaning towards Florida uh, in this one. Uh, I think they're just a little bit stronger of a team. Uh, I know the firepower that Tampa has and Hedman, I think uh, with Sergachev out, uh, it's a little bit different for sure still for them, especially in the playoffs. He's such a great defender and hard to play against. But uh, yeah, I'm leaning towards Florida in this first game. Uh, in regulation, and then also thinking both teams to score in the first period as well. Going to take a little look at that. So, uh, like Matt was saying, I wouldn't be surprised either if Tampa won it in five either. But I like Florida. I think bobrovsky has been great. He's a good playoff guy, and I really enjoy Paul Maurice behind the bench for them as well. So, and they're a very tough team. So let's go Panthers. All right, let's go with the Panthers there for uh, Matt uh, for Zach Urban there with the uh, Tampa Florida series. As far as the props go. Uh, I like the thought of Duclair for Tampa Bay. He did score against Toronto, of course, the final regular season game. He's up on the top line. Now, we are concerned about some of the lack of the numbers he's put up in the playoffs at times in the past, but he is a former Florida Panther. You know, he is playing in his old team, so does that fuel the uh, fire, if you will, for him? I still think he's worth a look as far as uh, props go uh, in this game and maybe throughout this series as well. Carter Verhage, you know, is someone that I'm going to look at as well for me. Uh, the Florida uh, Panthers standpoint. In fact, I've got a goal prop, prop same game parlay here in this one with a point and with Verhage. I think these guys really do show up big time in the playoffs. Verhage usually does. Braden point every year. Seems like he's making an impact and scoring big goals for Tampa Bay. So you get a nice little Braden point Carter Verhage goal parlay that uh, that's what I formed here for my SGP for this game coming up. Uh, between the uh, Lightning and Panthers uh, on Sunday afternoon. All right, next up, we've got another Sunday afternoon game. Uh, this is also ESPN. Actually, they're all ESPN Network games on Sunday. Washington Capitals, New York Rangers, uh, with uh, the lead team of uh, Sean McDonough, Ray Ferraro, Emily Kaplan here for this one. Uh, Rangers minus 240, home favorites, five and a half the total uh, in this game. Uh, this is one where it, uh, I'm definitely not involved a whole lot. Uh, other than I'll say this, what I like really a lot in this series is Alexi Lafreniere over his goal prop for the series. I think him to score a goal in this game is worth a look. I think he's ready to take that step. He showed it in the regular season, his best season ever. Uh, and he, I think, is ready to have an, a really impactful playoffs for the uh, New York Rangers. You know you should get you know pretty good play from Panarin because he's been very good all year. Kreider's going to do his thing on the power play especially. Uh, Sabana Jad has the tendency to up the ante in the playoffs at times, but I think Lafreniere is that one that's going to really, you know, bust out here for the Rangers and say, you know what, I'm ready for prime time because he finally had that display uh, in the regular season. And I definitely think you're going to see more of that here uh, moving forward uh, in this first round series. The key for the Capitals is Spencer Carberry and the Capitals found a style that worked for them down the stretch. Tight checking almost like a 90s Devils approach, you know, low scoring, great goaltending, and let's hope that carries us to victories. Look at how they played down the stretch. The Detroit game, the Philadelphia game, which got them into the playoffs. This is not those high-flying capitals from seven, eight years ago with uh, Bruce Boudreaux coaching them. You know, they got into a lot of 4-3, four, 5-4 four games. No, they're trying to win the low-scoring games because I think they realize, you know, we're not we're very top-heavy. Once we get past Alex Ovechkin and Wilson and Dylan Strom, there's not a whole lot there. And look, TJ Oshie's scuffling right now. He really didn't do a whole lot down the stretch. I'm wondering if he's hurt. I'm wondering if he's 100% healthy at this stage of the year, TJ Oshie, because he didn't really have a phenomenal finish to the season by any stretch. So, you know, the offensive options for this team are limited right now. You know, there was a, for some of these games down the stretch, John Carlson's been like their best, best offensive weapon and he's a great defenseman but that still shouldn't be the case so it tells you how much this team has kind of been struggling uh, here to score goals down the stretch so as far as this total goes and with the rangers they're one of those teams that hey you want to open things up and run and gun trade scoring chances we'll play that way you want to dumb it down you want to play tight you want to play a lower scoring battle we, we can play it that way as well so the Rangers are one of these teams that will sometimes dance the way with the opponent the way the opponent wants to go. You know, if the it's like that uh, uh, dance partner, 
you know, if the dance partner wants to dance to hip hop, you dance to hip hop. You know, if the dance partner wants to dance to jazz, you dance to jazz. That's basically the Rangers. If they, if you, if you're going to open it up against them, they can play that way. If you want to slow it down, you want to play tight checking, defense first approach. They can play it that way uh, as well. Now, in the regular season between the uh, Capitals and the Rangers, um, we did see more unders than overs. Three of the four games stayed under the total, uh, including a two to one game the last time they faced off in New York. In fact, they played a back to back a weekend in January. Uh, and both of those games stayed under the total. One was 3-2, the other was 2-1. to one. That's the kind of series I think this is going to be. Because I just think the cat, and look, Charlie Lindgren has, I, I, I'm reluctant to doubt him, at least right now, because he's been so great down the stretch. Uh, he's a big part of the reason why they got into the playoffs. Um, and he's got the potential if he makes these 30, 40, you know what's going to be a good prop in this series? And, uh, and that we don't talk about it as much as we could. And that's the goalie saves prop. I mean, Charlie Lindgren over saves, I think, is going to be a good bet in this series. So I think the Rangers will carry play. I think the Rangers will generate a lot of shots, a lot of chances. And he's going to be called upon to face a, you know, a lot of pucks and a lot of shots. You know, what's that old saying? He's going to face more rubber than a dead skunk on the side of the road. That's going to be a Charlie Lindgren uh, here in this uh, game, for in this series, potentially, for the Washington Capitals. Uh, because so the Charlie Lindgren over saves prop, I probably will jump on that uh, here for game one and probably may look at that uh, a lot uh, throughout this series. But as far as the actual individual game one, uh, I'm off it totally side and total pre game. Um, I think the Rangers win, but the value it's hard to find it at minus 240. And because it's, I think it could be a close, lower scoring game, I don't find the value in a regulation or a, or a puck line with the Rangers. Total, I think, could go either way. And uh, uh, five and a half, I actually lean under, but five and a half is always that tricky number to go under. I lean to the draw, but I'm also worried, as someone in the chat mentioned, you know, with Washington, um, they really had to put themselves through the mental, physical ringer to get into the playoffs. Maybe they're a little gassed going into game one and the Rangers turn it into like a four to one type of win. So even I don't like the draw too much in this game, which is why for me, this is one of those we'll just sit back and watch. I will have some props I'll mention in a moment, but we'll just sit back and watch and we'll make uh, decisions on what we do for game two based on what happens here on Sunday afternoon at MSG. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Capitals, Rangers. Yeah, I said yesterday in the preview, this is a, a live series for me. I don't have any plays uh, in the series. I don't have any game, any plays really for game one. Uh, and this will be I'll be watching this game live, seeing how the pace and, and how things go and then looking for adjusted prices in the series uh, moving forward. So you know, it's kind of boring, but that's just the, the take that I have with, with this game. Once again, I, I, I look to fade Washington. I believe the Rangers win this series. I don't think Washington makes this, this thing close. If they do, it has to be relying on them winning game one. Games one and two, you, ha you have to take one of these two game in, games in New York if you're really going to stand a chance, honestly. And, and that's the thing. Because of how they had to play down the stretch, they've already been playing playoff hockey. Is this team really going to be, uh, you know, still have the energy level to keep up with the Rangers team? That, like I said, that's adaptable. That's why the Rangers are, are, are the team that win the President's Trophy. They can adapt to play any style you want. So if Washington wants to slow it down, which had seemed like logistically would be the best move, kind of take the firepower away from New York. But New York can can play that tight game as well. And, and then when you need somebody to chip in and get a goal, who can you really count upon? Uh, if you're Washington. Now, if, you, if it's a more open game, you start getting those other lines mixed in. Uh, you know, Ovechkin and Wilson don't have to be the top guys. You get Sonny Milano involved, get some of those bottom six forwards involved in a, in a bit of a boat race. But can Lindgren make those big saves when he really needs to? That's the other question mark there. So just looking for things live in, in the game and, and waiting for something to matriculate after the game one as far as series goes. All right, good stuff. Matt, what do you think here, Caps Rangers? Yeah, I'm in a similar boat here. I mean, I feel like the obvious pick is the Rangers. They've been playing well down the stretch, um, really all season, obviously, to win the President's Trophy. Um, for that reason, the odds are kind of obviously skewed towards the Rangers. Um, as John Massey's mentioned before on the show, I do think the Rangers make it tougher on themselves uh, than it has to be. Uh, so I could see Washington winning this game. Um, I just don't know if, if Washington's out of gas, they finally – or they really had to fight to get into the playoffs. There's five teams in the mix. You know, they're the ones that come out on the other side. Um, you know, I could see this being a Rangers sweep. 
Um, but if John Massey's correct and he's our, our Rangers uh, guru expert, um, maybe Washington takes game one and maybe this goes to six games, seven games. I don't know. Um, I still think New York gets out of the series, but again, the, the odds are pretty heavy on them. So uh, definitely going to be something I wait and see. Um, we'll see how these first three games trend. Um, you know, if there's a lot of first period overs and goals happening, maybe I jump on a first period over here to see if New York comes out, scores two quick ones or something. Um, I know that MSG will be rocking tomorrow. Um, but yeah, as far as right now, I have nothing on this game and nothing on the series. Sounds like it's a consensus here. This is a very tricky game and a very tricky series to bet pre-flop. I think we're all kind of in that same kind of uh, position right here. We'll see if Zach is uh, in line here. What do you think, Zach? Washington, New York. Yeah, I'm feeling the same way, so I'm leaning towards a draw in game one. I think Washington's going to obviously keep that vibe of keeping it really tight, hopefully try and shut down some of the Rangers uh, in game one. And I think the Rangers are going to come out a little slow, to be honest. Uh, you know, they've been in that spot. They get the uh, President's uh, Trophy, so – kind of been a curse in the past. I don't think Washington's a strong enough team to do some uh, damage throughout the whole series. So I still have the Rangers in five. But uh, yeah, I'm leaning towards the draw tonight and or tomorrow, sorry, and hoping that it's a quick series the rest of the way for the Rangers. All right, so we got a draw here for uh, Zach with uh, game one with the uh, Capitals and the uh, Rangers. And like I said, the main prop that I'm going to roll with here for game one uh, on Sunday, I'm going to. Well, I like Lafreniere on its own as a goal prop, um, and I even. But I'm going to go with uh, him to get a point, along with Ar Artemi Panarin uh, to get a point as well. Uh, again, the value on that's not going to be phenomenal, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. But the fact remains, we're we're looking for wins, you know. We're looking for you know with the uh, same game parlays, especially game one, you know, the, the, even the same game parlays. Look, I'm going to have stronger, you know. Uh, opportunities with those once we get a game under uh, our belt and we see uh, what develops. But I think just early, like it's just simple Panarin a point, Lafreniere a point, plus 115. Still a pretty good price, plus money, you know, plus 115. So keeping it really simple there, Panarin, Lafreniere uh, to get a point, plus 115. Uh, you could even, you know, sprinkle on them to get two points. You'll turn it into an even better, more tantalizing uh, plus price, but definitely thinking that, um, you know, and what is a tight lower scoring game potentially, at least in my opinion, I didn't want to get cute. Just one point for each guy. Artemi Panarin, the bread man who's had this tremendous season and Lafreniere, who's had a, you know, I think a renaissance season for him because really people were wondering if he's just a complete yep. bust coming into this season. And he has had, you know, a bounce back season. It's plus 115. Just to ask Artemi Panarin and Alexi Lafreniere each to get a point. So I like that here in this uh, Capitals and Rangers game. All right. We now, everything we've done so far is Eastern Conference. Uh, we're now going to turn our attention to the West, and it's the Wild West. It's a Western Conference where you can make a case for really almost all eight teams, you know, to make a run here in the Western Conference side of the playoffs. This series has the potential to be phenomenal. Colorado Avalanche, Winnipeg Jets. Uh, we've got Winnipeg. Uh, that's actually even money here, minus 110. Uh, both sides, five and a half the total. This game one is Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Chicken Parm is going to call this game here for ESPN. Uh, John Buchagross with um, Cassie uh, in uh, Winnipeg uh, for this uh, Avalanche Jets game on ESPN. Should be great. Um, Colorado. We've talked about this a lot. feels like a broken record at this point. How concerned we all are for the defense. How concerned we all are for Alexander Georgiev, who, let's be honest, did not play great down the stretch and didn't have a, the best help either. A lot of those games, and I think back to the final meeting with the Jets and the Avs this year, where the Winnipeg went in there and in stunning fashion beat them down 7 to nothing. The breakdowns in the Colorado zone defensively were egregious, were atrocious and were flat out embarrassing. And I couldn't believe I was watching that from a Colorado Avalanche team. It was stunning to behold. And then they actually have the right mindset after that seven nothing debacle against Winnipeg to playing Vegas. They jump out to a three nothing lead uh, midway through the second period. And then they absolutely fall apart in the third with again their defense and their goaltending, that combination letting them down. Vegas ties it up. Vegas ends up winning in overtime, and it's another debilitating loss. 
I, I don't know if Colorado can gleam a whole lot from wow, well, a feel good five to one win against an Edmonton team that sats their top seven scores, their top seven players. You know, how much can you really say, wow, we're we're back on track. We're feeling good again. We beat Edmonton, who played nobody in that game. Um, so there's concerns to me with Colorado. Did uh, Ian, did you hear it too this morning? They ruled Jonathan Drewhan out for the entire just series. About to get to that, Zach. Absolutely. Crazy. Yes. Um, just basically breaking news hot off the presses. Jonathan Drewhan, who's had a really good season for the Colorado Avalanche, he's out for at least the entirety of the first round. So you will not see him at all. Uh, in this series and that's a blow with the way he's played there is no question about that now the one saving grace here for the avalanche is while they've had drew Ann mckinnon and rantanen on that top line it's a very simple fix without drew Ann. you just slide big val nachushkin back up there who of course has had a ton of experience playing with mckinnon and rantanen so i'm sure that's going to end up being the adjustment and the change that uh, jared bednar makes without jonathan drew Ann. just put big val nachushkin up there uh, and you will be uh, hopefully fine as far as the top line goes. But then it doesn't make the second line as potent because now you got to make an adjustment there. And another thing, too, with Colorado, nope, not enough people talk about this here because I think it's going to be Nachushkin, McKinnon, and Rantanen. You probably slide up Miles Wood or Colton or Parisi. One of them has to slide up with Lekkonen and Middlestat uh, on the second line. But who's going to score consistently from the bottom six? Talk about it all the time in the playoffs. You need some punch and you need some impact offensively from your bottom six forwards, you know, uh, because they can often be the difference makers. And, you know, you look at it, can Ross Colton step up? He's done it at times uh, with Tampa going back to when he played there. Um, you know, Cogliano, Trenton, who they got from Nashville, Miles Wood. You know, they haven't gotten a whole lot as far as, you know, punch of offensively from the third and the fourth line. And that's going to be a concern going into this series. Um, and of course, Alexander Georgiev, the concern is, it goes without saying how concerned we are about him. He did not play well down the stretch. His numbers are pedestrian at best. And if he stumbles, and you know, to Alex's point all year about Joe Sackick not addressing goaltending depth, you know, you've got to rely on this young Finnish netminder, Eustace Onanen, who to his credit played better in the, in the latter part of the year. He had those rough T bad starts the first few he had and he did play a lot better but again this is the playoffs now this is a really good hockey team you're playing you're gonna and if you play in winnipeg in particular it's gonna be a loud environment is you're gonna be able to hold up to that if you're used to on and you know if you end up uh, getting a net at any point in this series so colorado uh, the scary part for colorado is you know you still have nathan mckinnon who is almost can carry this team on his back to winning this series that's the one, you know, Colorado can still win this series. If McKinnon's all world, which he can be, Rantanen's phenomenal. Big Val Nachushkin shows he's back to the form we saw earlier in the regular season and last year and even two years ago. And he showed it against, well, again, against Edmonton with sitting everybody, but he's got that capability. So that's always the scary part uh, about facing Colorado. But I think we need to touch on Winnipeg's offense a little bit, which early in the season we were worried, right? Uh-oh, they're not scoring goals right now, the Winnipeg Jets. What's going on right now? And then suddenly they add Monaghan. They add they add Monaghan at the deadline. They get Gabe Velarde back from injury in the second half of the season. And you correlate the improvement in Winnipeg's offensive numbers since they got Velarde back from injury. And it is really, really uncanny. Uh, as far as how much better they've been uh, in terms of putting the puck in the net as a team. In fact, I'm going to go bring this uh, stat up because I know I've mentioned it already. I think I might have mentioned this yesterday uh, on the show, but it, it's such a good stat to to bring up that it's worth mentioning here once again. Uh, I'll just uh, get Gabe Velarde here uh, in front of my screen and mention this. So I've got the Gabe Velarde game log basically in front of me here uh, in front of, in, as far as his game by game statistics with Gabe Velarde on the ice and in the lineup for the Winnipeg Jets since February the 17th. All right. These are games that he's suited up and he's been on the ice this is excluding all the games he missed due to injury. Gabe Velarde since February 17th with Velarde in the lineup, this Winnipeg Jets team. Uh, ended the season uh, on a, uh, let me just count it up here, 13-3 and three in 16 games with Gabe Velarde in the lineup. Since February 17th with Velarde on the ice, they were 13-3, and three, the Winnipeg Jets, 
uh, in those 16 games that he suited up. From a totals perspective, let's also talk about that. With Gabe Velarde in the lineup, excluding pushes, the Winnipeg Jets with Gabe Velarde in their lineup, um, 11, 12 and 4 to the over in those 16 games. So 13 and 3 uh, straight up record in 16 games with Gabe Velarde. And um, excluding the pushes, uh, it was actually, no, it was 10 4 and 2 to the over in those 16 games. 10 4 and 2, 10 overs, 4 unders, 2 pushes. So with Velarde back, the offense was humming. They were suddenly scoring goals. Look what it's done for Kyle Connor, who was very good down the stretch. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, Shifley as well. Uh, it just made this lineup better, deeper. And all of a sudden, this is a Winnipeg offense that, uh, are they at the top of the league offensively? No, but they're certainly a lot better than the, the they're given credit for. And I think that is something that stands out to me going into this series, which is why here, as far as this series goes, I do like the Jets in the series. I did take Winnipeg in the series here uh, in the minus 110, minus 115 range. And yes, Nick, don't look now. Cole Perfetti's heating up. And this is a guy that went through a big time slump, okay, mid middle part of the year. And now all of a sudden he's heating up now for the uh, Winnipeg Jets, which uh, is good news for them going into this series against a possibly vulnerable defensive team. Uh, struggling the way they did down the stretch like Colorado. So I like Winnipeg in the series. I am actually, I'm probably going to lay off Winnipeg in game one. And there's only one reason for that and just take them to win the series. I don't love the idea of taking Winnipeg in game one when the last time these teams met, Winnipeg totally embarrassed Colorado. That That's a little unsettling to me to take Winnipeg in game one with Colorado with that painful memory fresh in their mind that they got totally and utterly uh, annihilated and, and just totally embarrassed on their home ice. So, cause I, I do expect Colorado to have a strong effort here in this game one, knowing that, but will it be enough is the question with those defensive and goaltending uh, worries, you know, that we all have. So I like Winnipeg in the series. I am not on Winnipeg in game one. What I am on though, in game one is um, over by FACTA. And I really like this uh, over one and a half first period over five and a half full game. You look at the head-to-head -head meetings with Colorado and Winnipeg this year. Uh, we had three head-to-head -head meetings, December 7th, December 16th, April 13th. First meeting in Colorado, 4-2 Jets. In Winnipeg, December 16th, 6-2 Jets. And then, of course, the 7 nothing shellacking for Winnipeg and Colorado just a week ago. All three games, minimum six goals. Minimum six goals in all three head-to-head -head meetings with the Avs and Jets. So to me, to see this total at five and a half, I'm more than a little bit stunned. More than a little bit stunned because we know Colorado's got issues keeping the puck out of their own net, but we know they're still very lethal and potent offensively. Combined with the fact that the Jets, I don't think, are given enough credit for the way they have played offensively as a team down the stretch since getting Gabe Velarde back. Put it all together, and I think this total is just, it's at the very least, it's a half goal too low. Six minimum should be the total in this game. Minimum. You could even make a case with series history and Winnipeg's improved offensive play, them trending over, Colorado trending over, struggling to keep the puck out. Could even make a case it could be six and a half here in this first game. But at the very least, it should be six, this full game total, in my opinion. It isn't. It's five and a half across the board, and I'm happy to take advantage. Over by Fecta for me here. Colorado, Winnipeg. Alex, what do you think here? Avs, Jets. Yeah, now, as far as series goes, I like Winnipeg in this spot. It's the first thing that I bet uh, I got plus 115. So the pluses are all gone, especially now with that Drew in news as well. That's big for Colorado. Which, like I said, we worry about the defense, worry about the goaltending. But now, if this team becomes a, a, a top-heavy offensive unit, and, and those guys like, uh, you know, Big Val don't get it rolling, if McKinnon somehow goes cold, which he hasn't all year, but if, those, if that's to happen, this is the Colorado team's in a world of trouble. But I, I do expect goals here in this first game. I don't like Winnipeg as a side in game one necessarily, except because of, of the you know what happened with the last meeting in the regular season. This could be a back-and-forth battle. So I like the over trifecta here. Uh, I got first period over, one-and-a-half minus 115. I got over five-and-a-half minus 120, but I got 
both teams to score in the first at plus 182 at FanDuel as well. I think we'll definitely see goals both ways. This will be a little bit of a chippy kind of a game, too. I think we see Winnipeg's known more for their physicality in, you know, previous years, you know, usually being one of the bigger teams in the league. I think they kind of maybe revert back to that play a little bit early just to kind of establish some dominance. Colorado can definitely match in that physicality route, but, of course, we know the offensive talent they have as well. So should definitely be a good game and a good series. Yeah, I can't wait for this. This is going to be a lot of fun. And that's also why, you know what, I think Colorado is not done for offensively without Drouin because how many teams can say we lose Drouin, who's been great, been great on the top line as well with um, McKinnon and Ranton, and, and we can put big Val Nachushkin, Valerie Nachushkin in his place, who's, you know, they won't skip a beat on that top line. Uh, and, in fact, you know, Nachushkin, we've seen him dominate you know, in the regular season and in the playoffs in the past. So, no, I'm not worried about their offense. I'm worried about their defense, and I'm worried about Georgiev. And I think we all are. That's where the concern is right now for the uh, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, what do you think here, Matt? Colorado, Winnipeg, game one. Yeah, so I definitely am on the over by the fact that I think there's going to be a lot of goals. Um, I'm not going to negatively talk about Colorado's offense. It's obviously there. They're going to score a few goals, even if Hellebuck's playing lights out. Um, but I think Winnipeg's offense goes kind of unnoticed. They've got some great depth, um, and I am worried about the Avs' defense, and Gorgiev has a big question mark for me. Um, that's why I'm on Winnipeg for the series. Um, for this game, I lean Winnipeg. Um, they are at home. I, I do see your point of, yeah, they just got the shit kicked out of them in Colorado at Ball Arena, 7-0. I do think there's some added motivation there, but I think Winnipeg knows that, you know, they don't want to keep Colorado around. Winnipeg would love to win this series. I, I know this is speaking, obviously, but they want to win it in five. They don't want to go to game seven, you know, give the abs a chance, a team with experience, a team with a lot of guys that have won a cup. Um, you know, I think they have a big motivation to win this game one. Um, I do think the abs will come out strong, but I, I may sprinkle on Winnipeg money line. Uh, for this game one, just given the price point, uh, because I do think if Winnipeg does take game one, you won't see these odds for game two. You won't be able to get them at kind of a pick them, um, especially if Colorado has the concerns that we mentioned, has some goalie issues. You know, maybe it's not their year. They're just going to kind of roll over and, and Winnipeg's going to take the series. So I may sprinkle on Winnipeg, but I love the over by effect here. I, I'm shocked that I can get pretty good price. Uh, at five and a half with this series because I do think Colorado will score, but I think that Winnipeg, you know, could have five or six goals on their own, um, just given the concerns with the Avs defense. So, um, and then yeah, as far as series, I like I mentioned, I'm on Winnipeg. I think in my bracket, I have it going to six. Um, the only thing I don't like about that is that would mean Winnipeg wins in Colorado. Um, so if I, from a betting perspective, I may even take Winnipeg uh, in five or maybe a Winnipeg game one and to win the series, something like that. To put this total in perspective, this five and a half with this game one, Colorado had one game all year, one with a total of five and a half, one. One game all year with a total of five and a half, and it was a game in October at the New York Islanders, and it was seven to four in that game. <laughs> so, And I'm, I'm pretty sure if we see this five and a half cash over and go way over, the game two will definitely open six and we'll probably see yeah. six for even game three. So that's the thinking. That's the thinking that this five and a half will not hold. If, if it goes over the total here in game one, it won't hold for the rest of the series. Uh, what do you think here in this one, Zach, Colorado, Winnipeg? Yeah, I'm with Matt. I think uh, Winnipeg, you know, they want to come out strong and, you know, set a, set a good tone early. Like they did in that previous regular season game. Uh, they're doing the whiteout in Winnipeg. So that's going to be fun to watch for sure. It's going to be rocking. So, I'm definitely leaning towards Winnipeg here in game one. Uh, I also got them in this series as well. I think they're just a stronger team. I think they're ready. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, what they'll do for it if they can get past Colorado. Colorado doesn't uh, give me much confidence with what they've got in net compared to what, what Winnipeg has in net. So I think that's kind of where there's a big kind of uh, adjustment um, or a big gap, I should say. So I'm going Winnipeg. Game one here, and then I'm also going to take the Jets in six. I think it's going to go to six. Uh, it would be nice to see McKinnon, you know, do the type of damage he did in the regular season. Uh, I think that's what it's going to take for Colorado to get by Winnipeg. So 
if the big dog can show up, maybe they got a chance, but I definitely like Winnipeg. And they better be ready to come out storm in Winnipeg after what Rick Bonus said about their performance and their effort after getting bounced by the Vegas Golden Knights yeah. uh, in the first round last year with one of the all-time you know, public land based <laughs> of, of his team that you'll ever hear from a coach. Uh, awesome. And uh, if that doesn't resonate in the, especially the leadership group, Adam Lowry, Mark Shifley, Kyle Connor, you know, Josh Morrissey, the guys that have been here for a long time with this team, there's a lot of guys and the Ealers even a lot of players have been here for a long time through the, the were there last year as well. That's got to resonate that, Hey, this is the time we've got to sh show our coach that we're not going to be what we were last year uh, against the uh, Vegas golden Knights. So very, very, this is a fascinating series. Can't wait. As uh, far as my same game parlay here for avalanche and jets right now, uh goal parlay here, big Val and Velarde keeping it simple. Big Val and Velarde. Big Val, you know, is going to be on the top line for the uh, Colorado Avalanche now with Jonathan Drouin out. So I think there's a great chance he lights the lamp. And uh, most and Gabe Velarde, it goes without saying, just how phenomenal he was for the uh, Winnipeg Jets down the stretch of the regular season. So again, with uh, that uh, par same game parlay, it's uh, Velarde to score a goal, Big Val to score a goal, plus 800 at Bet365. That is definitely something that uh, is appealing to me when it comes to Avalanche and Jets here on uh, Sunday night. All right, next up, it's our final game uh, of this Saturday show, and it's the final game on Sunday uh, to wrap up a quadruple header of Sunday playoff action. Nashville Predators, Vancouver Canucks. We've got Vancouver minus 145 home favorites, five and a half being the uh, total uh, here in this game. Uh, Again, this is a very interesting series, too, because you've got this Nashville team that had that consecutive game point streak, which bolstered their uh, efforts to get into the playoffs. Um, just an outstanding run, uh, a phenomenal season from the likes of Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Roman Yossi uh, on the blue line in particular, who went a long way to uh, carry this team You know, at the offensive end uh, throughout the second half of the year when they made that push into the playoffs. But the Vancouver Canucks, even with a second half that was obviously not as good as the first half, and there were some concerns about, uh-oh, have they peaked? Have they run out of gas? You know, Are there going to be concerns about Vancouver going into this series? Um, you look at it, I think for Vancouver, they steadied the ship a little bit down the stretch. They got back to playing pretty good defensive hockey as a team. Thatcher Demko is now back in the fold. He had a few games under his belt down the stretch, which I think is going to help him play uh, at a better level here uh, right away in this uh, series. Uh, as far as game one goes, the only thing I'm going to look at here is a small piece of the draw uh, with the uh, Predators and Canucks game one. Uh, I do think it's going to be a pretty close, tight series. Um, certainly um, not a series where if you're Nashville, you're going to be probably looking to play with a little bit of pace. That's usually what you get from them under Andrew Burnett since he's been here. You know, they've played with a little bit more of a willingness to trade chances. Rick Tockett ain't going to want that for Vancouver. He's going to want this team to be very, very sound defensively. Uh, the one thing, too, that I noticed, too, and uh, I know it's been mentioned a few times, um, that Nashville, they really do generate a lot of their chances, you know, an odd man rushes, rush chances, and Vancouver has not given up you know, a ton in that regard. So, you know, the question is going to be, can Bank uh, Nashville get their offense rolling when, you know, they have to cycle the puck, play more of a, you know, puck possession game in the offensive zone, you know, and that's why if you're Vancouver and Tockett knows this, don't turn the puck over to put yourself in a position where you're giving up rush chances to a very dynamite Nashville team that can make you pay, you know, off the rush. And uh, if they negate those, you know, they're going to put themselves uh, in a pretty good position here uh, in this series. So this is a very good, definitely a chess match type of series is what this one sets up to be. Looking forward to it. Uh, of course, Demko back for the Canucks. You see Soros in net for Nashville, who is capable of absolutely stealing a series and being just uh, absolutely strong in net. But he did, had kind of had an up and down year, especially down the stretch. He had some games where he got lit up. So it's going to be very interesting to monitor UC Soros and can he deliver at that highest level that he's capable of. And more importantly for the Predators, you know the Canucks will work on shutting down or at least negating Philip Forsberg. They have to. That's the, that's the head of the snake. That's who you have to focus on. So if Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist are negated, can Jason Zucker, Sissons, Cody Glass, 
um, uh, Novak, uh, Evangelista, can they get consistent punch offensively from line two and line three? If they can, that's going to offset the Forsberg line negated. You know, if Vancouver is able to put the clamps down on them, if they don't, you know, and they're able to at least control Forsberg and his line a bit, it's going to make things difficult for Nashville against a team that's already pretty stingy in the Vancouver Canucks. So I do think Vancouver does win this series. I did pick them to advance, but I do think it's a very competitive series. And as for game one, the only thing I have pregame here is the draw. This is definitely a series where I'm looking more toward game two. Whatever we see in game one, we'll pivot off it. I will definitely be involved more from a pregame perspective, betting wise in game two uh, of this series. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Nashville, Vancouver. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you as far as game one, only liking the draw. I'm not probably not playing anything series wise. I have a huge future with Vancouver to win the West, Vancouver to win the Cup. So I'm just kind of riding with those for right now. I also have Vancouver to win the first two rounds as well. So that's the way that I've played the series, uh, you know, de facto. But as far as game, looking at the draw, we'll be looking for something in game as well. This will probably be more, this is kind of like my Western version of Washington and New York Rangers where I'm going to be looking more for in-game looks throughout the series. But I do like the draw. And there's something interesting that I've noticed. I don't have a play for it in this series, but I'll talk about it on Monday. There's an option at FanDuel where you can bet the game to reach the overtime and also who scores the winning goal in overtime. I will definitely be looking at that for some of these draw plays. But uh, there's one in particular I'll be looking at, and I'll talk about that on Monday. No doubt. And by the way, we forgot to mention it with Colorado, Winnipeg. Alex and I are both on, someone mentioned it in the chat. We're both on Gabe Velarde to lead the series in goals. We both took a shot with that yep. uh, in that abs jet series. In this series, I mentioned it yesterday. I like Connor Garland to lead the series in goals. And he's definitely the one from a prop standpoint. I like for Vancouver in this game. I will be on Connor Garland, score a goal to get a point. Uh, definitely in that regard, Connor Garland will probably point at the very least Connor Garland to get a point will be in my uh, same game parlay for this game uh, between the uh, Predators uh, and the uh, Canucks. No question about it. Uh, Matt, what do you think here? Nashville, Vancouver. Yeah, this is a tough one for me because, I mean, again, if you had asked me a month and a month and a half ago, I would say Vancouver sweeps this series. But, you know, Nashville really played well down the stretch and Vancouver struggled. Um, and a lot of that can be um, attributed to Demko being out. You know, he's a big piece for them. Uh, in their success. So I I go back and forth. I, I've switched my bracket four times. I, I have it set to game seven and I've gone Nashville and then I'm like, ah, no, maybe Vancouver wins it. So I lean Vancouver slightly just because I think they are the better team, um, you know, throughout the whole season. Um, but it's tough to bet against Nashville just given the run they went on towards the end of the year. So um, this will probably be same boat for me. I don't think I'll have anything pregame. Um, we'll see how the games are going. Maybe I throw a first period over there, just, you know, hoping for some action. Um, but you know, I could see both teams coming out, trying to kind of feel each other out. It could be a slow first period. So I may even just stay off that. I, I might, I think you guys talked me into the draw though. Um, because I think it's going to be such a consistent series. Um, I could see a few of these games going to overtime. So I might try, uh, and sprinkle on the draw there, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I again, I lean Vancouver, but it's very, very slight. And I think Nashville could totally take this series and I wouldn't be shocked at all. So um, it's going to be a good one. But uh, but yeah, don't don't have a lot of good feel for it. Um, that's for sure. Yeah, this one for me, I, I'm going to have a good feel for probably game two and beyond. But this series is another one of those where in game one, you know, especially with the lay. Th this has been a long layoff for Nashville uh, in particular. Uh, by the way, for prior to game one. So that's why this one does look a little bit, you know, more of a, let's see how Nashville comes out in particular. I think honestly, uh, if, if I were to bet a side, I'm not moving on Vancouver. I might bet Vancouver in game at some point, if they like, maybe give up the first goal. But I think from a situational standpoint, you can make a solid case for Vancouver here, minus 145, because it, it has been a little bit of a longer uh, respite here for Nashville since they wrapped up the regular season. Will they be sharp right away? It's going to be a you know legitimate question here uh, for game one. Zach, what do you think here? Preds, Canucks. Yeah, I agree with a, a lot with what Matt said. You know, it's it's hard to bet against Nashville right now because you know they were one of the hottest teams in the NHL in recent time. Here, they have cooled off a little bit these last week or so, and uh, Demko being back uh, in Vancouver 
is huge, obviously, for them. They play so good against them. So I'm thinking uh, in this one, Vancouver is going to get off to a good start. So I'm going to take uh, the Canucks in game one. Uh, but honestly, I, I'm leaning a little bit towards the Pred side in the series. Uh, I think I'm just going to take both teams in six. That's kind of the games that I think we're going to get out of this series. Uh, can't really pick a winner, so I'm going to take both teams in six. All right, good stuff. Uh, there is a couple of uh, props here that I've got uh, here. I've got an all. I've got two actually. I've got an all Canuck point parlay here for this game. I've got Garland, Hughes, Miller, and Besser, uh, and that one is plus three twenty five. So that's Garland, uh, uh, Connor Garland, Quinn Hughes, JT Miller, Brock Besser. Just each of them to get a point, plus 325. And then I've got one with only Garland for the Canucks, along with Yossi and Forsberg for the Predators. And that one is plus 275. So I've got Garland with uh, Miller, Besser, and Hughes. And then I've got Garland with Yossi and Forsberg. Uh, the Yossi with Forsberg and uh, Garland one is plus 275. Uh, and the other one with the uh, four Canucks, Garland, Hughes, Miller, and Besser, uh, is plus 325. I'm scared to death right now of props with Pedersen because he didn't have a great finish to the season. I got to see him up the ante a little bit yeah. in game one and beyond before I'm ready to put him in any sort of uh, SGP or, or prop situation here in this series. So, again, we'll see uh, how it ends up uh, playing out uh, here. Uh, we will get to Monday's thoughts Right now from uh, Matt, at the series that start on Monday, not game one necessarily, but just overall series thoughts for the uh, two Western Conference series that begin on Monday. We've got Vegas, Dallas, and L.A. Edmonton uh, starting on uh, Monday. It looks like uh, Matt's brother, uh, Ryan, asking us in the chat, highest scoring team today, lowest scoring team today. Now that's highest scoring team. Today's tough, I got to admit. Um, I'll throw a curveball at you. Toronto Maple Leafs, highest scoring team today. That's uh, what I'll I throw, said. I'll throw that <laughs> one out there. And lowest scoring team, Islanders. Uh, I'll go there. Although, you know, the Islanders are still scary with the way Varlamov's played, but that's what I'll go. I mean, there's only two games to choose yeah. from. So Toronto highest, Islanders lowest is what I'll uh, go with there. All right. So Monday, the first series, I know Matt can't wait. Uh, he hates this team with a passion, the Vegas Golden Knights. How most of the hockey world, you know, despises this Vegas team now just because they're sick of them, sick of them winning, sick of the bullshit with the LTIR nonsense. Uh, and here we go, uh, Monday night, Vegas Golden Knights uh, taking on the Dallas Stars. Uh, there's the series prices, Dallas minus 130. Uh, we'll just throw it right to you, Matt, Vegas, Dallas. Yeah, um, as you mentioned, I think for – you know, once, and, and it's not to say people hate the Stars or anything like that, but um, it was pretty funny on Thursday night when the matchup was was announced, um, seeing the comments, people that are fans of teams of all over the NHL saying Dallas, at least for the first round, is America's team or the hockey world's team because everyone wants to see Vegas go down. Um, just given everything, you know, they won last year, the IR stuff, you know, the list goes on. Um, they've never really had a bad year since joining the league. They, you know, jumped right in and were in a cup final. So um, it's good to see people actually, you know, pulling for Dallas. But, uh, but yeah, I honestly, I went back and forth on, you know, do I want to see Dallas play Vegas? Do I want to see Dallas play LA? Um, I think because of, you know, they had five or six players that I'm sure will be in game one have been out the last few weeks. It's going to take some time to get into rhythm. So do I want Dallas to see Vegas in, in Series 1 when they're kind of out of shambles for a little bit? Maybe they get a two-game jump on them, and then I really feel confident Dallas taking the series from there. Or do I want to see them, you know, in a potential Western Conference final when they're really rocking and rolling? You know, maybe their goalies start getting hot because that's been a big question mark for Vegas. Um, so I'm kind of happy with how it turned out. Yes, I think Dallas LA would have been, you know, a little easier of a series maybe uh, with less hype on it. Um, but then, you know, you get Winnipeg or Colorado that was just in a bloodbath that's playing true playoff hockey. And so if Dallas, you know, takes L.A. fairly easy, maybe they get caught with their pants down and they're down two games to a, um, a team that just got out of a good series. So um, I like Dallas here. Um, I think that they need to take care of business quickly. Um, Paul Bizanet posted a tweet uh, on Thursday night that, he thinks that hurts Dallas's cup chances having to play Vegas first round because it's going to be a bloodbath. 
Um, I I don't disagree. I think if this game goes to seven, it you know hurts Dallas in the long run. Even if they get out of the series, it'll um, take so a lot out of whoever Dallas. wins that series. I agree. Yep. Yeah, and so I've got Dallas in five. Um, this is a different Dallas team than you saw. I know that Vegas has some pieces, but I'd also think Vegas's goalies are question mark. Um, Dallas has added Tanev. Uh, Duchesne has really blown up that Sagan Marchman line. That was a line that you know you couldn't really trust to get any points, and now they're a legitimate top six line just by adding Duchesne in there. And then you've got that third line with uh, Ben and the Young Guns. Um, I also would love to see, and you guys mentioned this on the show yesterday. Um, I'd love to see Robertson have a good, you know, start to the playoffs. He's kind of been a big question mark. Um, everyone knows what he's capable of. He's had over 100 points in the NHL um, as a young player. But, you know, he has been sort of lackadaisical in the playoffs. You know, is he soft? Is he not built for it? Um, so I think if he comes out, you know, maybe scores a goal or two on Monday night, look out because then they've got three lines of legitimate scoring power. That fourth line is a very solid fourth line. They've got a, a, a solid decor, and Jake Ottinger played his best hockey of the year in April, which, you know, he had sort of an up-and-down year, but that's what you want as your goalie, you know, peaking at the right time. So if you get that April Jake Ottinger and you get three lines of, of, of firepower, I, I think Dallas is, is right there with anybody. So, um, again, I think similar to the Boston series, I'm also going to play into uh, the fact that Vegas – kind of looked like they didn't want to play Edmonton. And I think, you know, kind of faking a game, you know, for a matchup is going to come back to haunt you. I think at that level, you got to play to win the game. And and that third period in uh, Anaheim uh, or in Vegas against Anaheim was a fucking joke. Those first two minutes, like, it looked like my men's league goalie was out there trying to play in an NHL game. So, um, yeah, I like Dallas in five. I know I've talked a lot, but this is obviously the series I'm most excited for. Um, and I am glad it ended up this way because I think the whole hockey community is excited for this series, just given what happened last year and the magnitude of it. So really looking forward to this series. But, uh, yeah, I've got Dallas in five. All right, Dallas Stars in five. And normally, uh, you know, he loves his team, but he, he I agree with him here. I think this is a Dallas series to lose in my opinion, and uh, they got to come out strong in game one. I said this, I'm not going to read. You can see my full thoughts on the uh, series yesterday on the uh, preview show, but game one's got to be Dallas's. Simple as that. This team embarrassed you at the end of that West final last year. Six nothing beat down in the closeout game. You're, you're playing well going in. They're not. They've got question marks in net. You don't. You know, come out strong. You know, AAC, get on your feet. Uh, get behind this team. Make this a difficult environment for Vegas and start the series strong if you're Dallas. Because if you don't win game one, I do think those mental demons creep in just a little bit. Uh, what do you think here, Zach? Vegas, Dallas. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm riding with the Stars too. I like them. Uh, picked them a couple months ago as potential cup winners. So I'm going to ride with them throughout the playoffs here. Uh, also not really a big fan of Vegas with everything that's been going on. So I can feel that vibe. So taking Dallas here in game one. And then I like the Stars in six. I think Vegas will, will win one. Maybe if they split in Dallas, hopefully they'll probably think about getting one, at least one in Vegas. So that's where my head's at with six games. But I agree with you as well, Ian. I think Dallas has to get out to a good start. Uh, they need that first game win, get that confidence roll, and you know, put Vegas where they should be. As uh, They really haven't played really great hockey down the stretch as well. So I'm um, riding with the Stars here. All right, good stuff. Riding with the uh, Stars uh, for uh, Zach Urban here as well in this series against the Vegas Golden Knights. And again, make sure if you missed it yesterday, watch it on archived uh, viewing uh, or listen uh, to the podcast of yesterday's playoff preview show. Me, Alex, uh, Danny DeKaiser, and Luke Adam. We went through all our series thoughts in depth yesterday, and that's why I'm going to save it for that. Um, watch it. Uh, tune into yesterday's show if you missed it for uh, Alex and I uh, talking about each of these series, including this one, LA and Edmonton. Edmonton minus 160 series favorites. Matt, what do you think here? Kings Oilers. Yeah. So I know that there's some history here. Obviously, this is the third year in a row they've uh, matched up. Um, I think for that reason, LA puts up more of a fight than maybe some people think. Um, but I think, you know, Edmonton is in great form right now. Um, you know, I, I saw some tweets like 
some people didn't notice that eight guys were sitting out of that Colorado game. You know, people <laughs> tweeting, is Edmonton, you know, not ready for the playoffs? I have a buddy in Colorado. He's a he's a basketball football guy, and he just likes to, like, he's so up and down with the abs. But he's like, dude, is Edmonton, like, going to be brutal in the playoffs? And I was like, did you check the rosters? <laughs> like, none of their players were playing. So that always just makes me laugh when you get, like, a casual fan. No clue. It, it's yeah. nothing on them, you know. If it was a a baseball game in the middle of the season, I I could say the same thing and they'd be like, you're an idiot. Like they sat five guys, but uh, no, it makes me laugh, but no, I don't count that, that Arizona game. That was obviously super meaningful for the coyotes. They wanted to, you know, send their loyal fans. I know there's not as many of them as some other towns and things like that, but they wanted to send those people um, home with a good game. So I don't think that was a bad spot for Edmonton. And then the Colorado game, I, you know, that doesn't mean anything to me. So I think Edmonton's rolling. Um, I think they've McDavid, you know, he's always been sort of like they get to the second round. Like, I think he really wants to make a run. I mean, uh, I know I'm speaking obvious facts, but I think this is the year that they legit can. I think they've boasted up their defense a little bit. The goaltending is still sometimes a question mark for me. Um, but I think Edmonton rolls L.A. I think this is, you know, maybe a five-game series. Um, but if this is a sweep, I would not be shocked either. Um, I definitely think Edmonton takes game one and two. Um, maybe L.A. squeaks one out at the uh, Staples Center, or Crypto.com, whatever the fuck it's called now. But uh, maybe they get one at home and it goes back to Edmonton and they win in five. But uh, I think Edmonton's in full control of the series. Wow, how about that? Edmonton to win, but win handily uh, here against the uh, uh, Edmonton uh, or for the, against the LA Kings. I actually think LA is going to give them some trouble in game one. After yeah. that, though, um, I'd be a little bit leery. I think Edmonton will get better and stronger as the series goes on. But I think there's something to that, and we'll talk about this more on Monday's show when we talk <clears> the individual <throat> game one. But just the idea that Edmonton's had their way with this L.A. team two years in a row in the playoffs. And L.A. is coming into game one thinking, you know, enough is enough. we got to start strong here and, and flip the script a little bit. Um, I, I think there's a possibility there that L.A. could steal game one. We'll talk about this more on Monday. But Alex and I are already on the draw, by the way. <clears throat> we mentioned yeah. that uh, yesterday on the uh, preview show that we saw 4-3 uh, final scores in the game one between the Kings and the Oilers each of the last two years that they played in the first round last year's game went to overtime <clears throat> game one. So uh, definitely think the draw is live there. Uh, Zach, what do you think here? Western conference first round LA Edmonton. Yeah, it, it pains me to say this, but I, I agree with Matt. I, I think Edmonton's in good form right now. I think with them falling and getting uh, or LA falling and them matching up against each other, uh, it was a blessing in disguise for Edmonton. You know, they're confident that they can beat this team. They've done it the past two years. You know, they've had some struggles in those series at times where people thought they weren't even going to win the series, and they've been fine. So uh, I do think a lot of Edmonton's success throughout the playoffs will depend a lot on Skinner. Uh, they've proved throughout the year that they can win the close games, and obviously playoffs, everything tightens up a little bit more. So Skinner has to be better than he was last year for Edmonton to go further. And I think, again, like I said, with them playing L.A. instead of Vegas, potentially could make their playoff run a lot better. You know, with McDavid's little lingering injury that was going on at the end of the year, I think Edmonton's mindset is let's try and get through this series quick, not sacrifice our play, but having that confidence and getting that little extra rest and then playing either. I think it would be Vancouver or Nashville, I think if I'm correct. And uh Going forward from there, it looked pretty healthy for them. Granted, they've struggled all year against Vancouver if that ends up being the potential matchup. But I, I like Edmonton heavy here. I think five games. I think LA might be able to steal one, but I'm going with Edmonton in five games. All right, Edmonton in five for uh, Zach. And you brought up a really good point about how if you're Edmonton, it certainly wouldn't hurt you, and it may very well help you. Try to get the series over with sooner rather than later. LA is a very heavy game. That's what they play. They play a very heavy game. They'll, they'll lay the lumber on you. They play a physical style of hockey. You don't want to be banging and crashing with the LA Kings for six, seven games when you have the murderer's row gauntlet that you got to go through uh, in the Western Conference if you're going to try to get to the Stanley Cup final. You know, when you've, you're you going to be playing, you know, a Vancouver or Nashville, you know, after this in the next round. Those will be heavy series too, both of them. Then you got maybe a Dallas down the road. 
you know, uh, which will be another, you know, hard series. Regardless, you're going to have a tough series every step of the way in the West. And if you're going six, seven with an LA team that throws the weight around, it's going to wear you out a little bit, you know, physically. So uh, that's why the onus should be for Edmonton. It's not just win the series, but if we have that opportunity to finish it off in a four or a five gamer, uh, as opposed to a six or a seven gamer, uh, you definitely want to be able to maybe take advantage of doing that, especially with just how brutally tough and exhausting it is going to be to get through the West this year uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. All right, great stuff. Uh, that is the uh, Saturday and Sunday NHL Game 1 action. And, man, we can't wait. Uh, the first game is three hours away, Islanders and Hurricanes. Uh, definitely looking forward to the weekend of Stanley Cup playoff action. You know what we're looking forward to as well. There it is on the screen. Three Live betcasts in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Our first one is Monday night, April 22nd. So two nights from now, 7 p.m. Eastern. And what a night. Leafs uh, Bruins, Isles Hurricanes, Golden Knights Stars, Kings Oilers. Four games Monday night. We will be here for all of them. 7 p.m. Eastern, Monday, April 22nd. Free for all betcasts. So all you need to do is uh, DM or email me or Alex for a spot on the BetCast Monday night, and we will send you the link for it before it begins. And then we have two Patreon-exclusive playoff live BetCasts, Thursday, April 25th, Tuesday, April 30th. And the only way to tune in and join us for those is to sign up now. Great time to do it, guys. Get in there before the playoffs start. Patreon.com slash guys, just $10 per month. Access to our Patreon-exclusive live BetCasts. Our daily sides, totals, and player props posted on the page each and every day throughout the playoffs, just like they are in the regular season. Goalie charts, totals charts, and more bonus content, plus the exclusive access to the Patreon live betcasts. So sign up now, just $10 per month, patreon.com slash ice guys. Get on board for the Stanley Cup playoffs there. And again, check out the Ice Guys store as well, iceguys.myspreadshop.com. Yeah, we got everything in stock right now and available for sale over at the Ice Guys store. You can grab that right now at iceguys.myspreadshop.com. And last but not least, if you haven't done it already, sign up for the Bracket Challenge, the Ice Guys Bracket Challenge. Uh, that is uh, up and available. The password is Bobano. Uh, everyone in the world can access it except Matt Robinson, apparently, uh, because he's using that old school uh, Windows 95 computer that can't fucking work apparently. Uh, he's still on Windows 95, man. It's 2024. Let's go here. I mean, Windows 95. I got a is MacBook Air. I've, Come on. I've tried it. <laughs> I've tried it in Safari. <laughs> I've done it on my brand new iPhone. I've done it in Google Chrome. I updated my Chrome. I cleared my cache and nothing. It, I've tried it. Capital, uncapital. It's not working. I'm in other brackets in the same fucking site is the hard part so that's weird. maybe we'll yeah. figure it out here in the next three hours but uh yeah otherwise i'll post my bracket uh once the first game starts <laughs> i'm not in the bracket just so it's you know visible what i what i took yeah it's uh it's pretty bizarre but uh yeah uh, unfortunately uh, as uh, like i say he's working on windows 3. Point uh, go back even further maybe he's working, maybe he's got that windows 3.1 machine <laughs> no wonder it's not working right now for our guy uh, matt robinson uh but in all seriousness no this is this is very bizarre uh you know obviously it's uh it's strange that he's not able to get in i can't explain it he can't explain it he's you know he's trying he can, there's nothing he can do about it and we're stumped as to why it's happening, but it is what it is. The majority have been able to sign up the bracket challenge. So make sure you do that before a uh, puck drop at 5 PM uh, Eastern time. All right. We got bargain bin special of the night. First playoff bargain bin special of the night segment and best bets coming up right after we hear from our great sponsors, Boston hemp Inc. <laughs>
All right. Happy 420, everybody. Boston Hemp, Inc. Make sure you check them out. Uh, today of all days, you should yeah. be checking them out. And again, with the Ice Guys promo code, get 20% off at bostonhempinc.com. But, Alex, is that special still on? Yeah, today and tomorrow, all the way until midnight Eastern, you can get uh, 40% off of any of your orders over at Boston Hemp, Inc. using code 420 uh, at checkout. So definitely want to take advantage of that with the holiday today. And it goes all the way until midnight tomorrow. All right, there you go, bostonhempinc.com. All right, Bargain Bin Special of the Night. First Stanley Cup Playoff edition of the Bargain Bin Special of the Night. Alex, we'll start with you. Where are you going in the Bargain Bin? So <laughs> it's, it's for tonight's game, or this counts as Sunday, too? Because they're actually looking at a This spot is actually Sunday. open-ended, so this can be Saturday right. or Sunday game since we're not on. A reminder, we're not on tomorrow. That's why we did the Saturday and the Sunday games today. So it can be from any of the six games this weekend. Okay, so I'm going with the Colorado and Winnipeg. We talk, already talked about how we like Gabe Velarde to be uh, the leading goal scorer for Winnipeg and in the series. I got, we got 18 to 1 for the series. I have plus 700 for him to lead the Jets. I think he's going to come out in the big way at home. And I think he gets two goals starting off tomorrow in game one. So give me that plus 2,300 at FanDuel. Gabe Velarde to score twice in game one for the Winnipeg Jets. And I'm not putting it past Alex anymore to cash one of these because his, some of these have just been incredible how he's hit some of these long, especially the the multiple goals, the first goal, uh, you name it. It's been pretty amazing. 23 to one plus 2300 Gabe Velarde over one and a half goals for Winnipeg Sunday night game one against Colorado bargain bin special of the night for Alex P. Smith. Uh, Matt, what do you got for the bargain bin special? Yeah. So just on that point, I think when it's a bigger bargain bin with alex it's more likely to hit like his when it's like three plus 350 i'm like ah, i don't love that when it's plus 800 or more i'm fucking on it because it fucking hits so, <laughs> That's cool. the that. bigger the price <laughs> the better the chance it seems with some of his bargain bins i agree it's crazy it's work that way um but i'm gonna go with a, a little bigger shot the odds are definitely not plus 2300 for this one um and i sort of Snuck it out early in the show, but I'm going to go with Austin Matthews to score the first goal of the game tonight for Toronto and Boston. Uh, I think I've seen it like plus 700, plus 720, something in that range. Um, Ian will probably give us where, where it's the highest, but um, just how the season ended, I think it's just one of those karma things that the hockey gods will fuck with everybody and he'll score the first goal early in the game tonight. So Austin Matthews, first goal of the Toronto-Boston game. All right, there you go. Austin Matthews for Toronto. First goal uh, tonight against the uh, Boston Bruins. Uh, again, shop around for that. I know uh, when it comes to uh, FanDuel, uh, it is currently uh, plus 650, but it's in that range. You're right, 650, 700. Make sure <clears throat> you shop around for that. Uh, Austin Matthews, first goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight against the Boston Bruins for Matt Robinson with his bargain bin special of the night. Zach, what have you got here? Bargain bin special. Yeah, uh, I'm sticking with the same game. This one isn't as tasty as Alex's. It just makes the cut, but I'm going with uh, Tyler Bertuzzi anytime goal uh, for the Leafs today. So that's my bargain special. Been special. I think I saw it at plus 300. Might be able to get a little more value out of it as well. But going with Bertuzzi scoring against the Bees. All right, Tyler Bertuzzi for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs against the uh, Boston Bruins to find the uh, back of the net. Uh, that's actually a good choice. Uh, and I've got Bertuzzi. At 25 to 1, all right, plus 2,500 to be the leading goal scorer in that Leafs Bruins series. Uh, and I honestly think it has a legitimate chance. Uh, I think he will have a big uh, uh, imprint on this series. Plus 310 at FanDuel uh, is the best price for Tyler Bertuzzi. So it makes the cut for uh, Zach Urban with his bargain bin special of the night. My bargain bin special of the night's going to come from the Colorado Winnipeg game on Sunday. But guess what? It's going to be one of the same game parlays that I mentioned. That's right. I'm going to do a same game parlay bargain bin special of the night. Gabe Velarde to score a goal. Val Nachushkin to score a goal. Plus 800. I think it's a great look. I think both of those guys have an excellent shot to get on the board. We know Big Val is going to take the spot vacated by Jonathan Drouin on the top line with Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen. And we know Gabe Velarde is red hot right now, scoring goals in bunches for Winnipeg. I like the combination, plus 800, really like the price. Same game parlay, Avs, Jets, Gabe Velarde goal, Valerie Natushkin <coughs> goal, plus 800 for my bargain bin special of the night. All right, best bets. Alex, we'll start with you. What do you like for best bet? 
Yeah, Sunday morning, this will be a good breakfast in bed, maybe roll a joint and watch the Battle of Florida in game one. Tampa Bay uh, taking on the Panthers, like goals here early. I think this is going to be a chippy battle. Definitely going to see some pace and, and, and some animosity, and that should lead to some early goals. 21-6 and six run in the season with Tampa Bay, the first period over. So let's go Bolts and Cats. First period over one and a half, you can get as low as minus $1.15. That's the best bet for Sunday. All right, there we go. That is a Battle of Florida, Tampa Bay, Florida, over one and a half first period. Uh, best bet for uh, Alex B. Smith. Uh, Matt, what do you like best bet? Yeah, so I had two written down on the off chance Alex took one of them, and he he ended up doing it. But it's okay because I love this bet as well. It's the exact same game, and it's the game over at five and a half. Um, I think you're going to see some goals in the first period. I think it might slow down a little bit. Uh, but this game's got to get to six. There's going to be power plays. Tampa's power play is lethal. Uh, Florida's definitely not shy on scoring goals as well. So uh, Tampa, <laughs> Florida, full game over, five and a half. That's my best bet of the weekend. All right, Tampa Bay, Florida, full game over for Matt Robinson, over five and a half, minus 120 with his uh, best bet. Uh, Zach, what do you like for best bet? Any game this weekend? Yeah, I'm going over to the Colorado and Winnipeg game and hitting the over there in the full game at 5.5. I think, uh, like you mentioned in the show, Ian, uh, a lot of goals against these two teams for when they match up. So going with the over in that game. All right, there we go. Over uh, five and a half, Colorado, Winnipeg. Best bet for uh, Zach Urban. And my best bet is the exact same one as Zach just mentioned. Colorado, Winnipeg, over five and a half. Uh, minus 115 to minus 120 that stood out right away to me. It jumped off the page. Colorado has had one game all season with a total of five and a half, and it was against the Islanders back in October, and even that game flew over the total. Uh, it's just too low. The Avs, with their offensive capability and with their defensive and goaltending struggles, combined with Winnipeg's improved offense, with uh, Gabe Velarde back in the fold down the stretch where they were trended to the over uh, down the stretch of the regular season, it all adds up to me. Colorado, Winnipeg, over five and a half for my best bet for this weekend game one action here in the Stanley Cup playoffs first round. All right, great stuff, great show. Shout out to everyone in the chat at the like button uh, on the way out. We thank Zach Urban and Matt Robinson uh, for joining us here on this Saturday edition. Reminder, no show tomorrow. Don't be DMing me at noon saying, where's the show? No show. And by the way, you shouldn't be DMing me. We got hockey right away around that time tomorrow. So that's why it's another reason why we did it today. We got to can just relax and watch the hockey right from the uh, get go tomorrow with the Battle of Florida. So no show tomorrow. We're back on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern for a big day on Monday daily show and playoff bet cast at night. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week. Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For Alex B. Smith, Matt Robinson, and Zach Urban, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the Stanley Cup playoff action getting underway. Can't fucking wait. And we will see you again Monday for another edition of the Ice Guys. 